Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the August 8th, 2017 meeting of the Downers Grove Village Council. It is my privilege to call this meeting to order. If you haven't already done so, there are copies of tonight's agenda on either side of the room as the young lady over there in the corner has just helped herself to one of our agendas. You can follow along with tonight's proceedings and there will be multiple opportunities for public comment, both with respect to things that are on tonight's agenda, as well as a segment under item four, which is reserved for public comments of a general nature. At that juncture, any member of the audience who has any questions or comments about anything that is not on tonight's agenda, we will ask you to please come down to that, that point in time, come to the podium, let us know who you are, and we will welcome hearing from you. I feel like I'm looking over here tonight because everybody's on this side of the room. <laughs> I will try to look over here occasionally just so the folks at home don't think that I'm favoring one side over the other. It is our proud custom to begin our meetings by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this juncture, I'd like to ask everyone present to please rise and join us in reciting the Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for joining us. I would now like to ask our fine village clerk, April Holden, to please call the roll. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Earl? Here. Commissioner Walden? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Barnett? Here. Mayor Tully? Here. Thank you very much. Next, that brings us to item three, which pertains to minutes of prior council meeting minutes. We have one set of minutes to review and approve tonight. Those are our minutes from our regular council meeting on August 1st, 2017. If there are no changes, comments, corrections, or otherwise, I will entertain a motion to approve, please. Rachel, I move that this council approve the meeting minutes from August 1st as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Just like that, we are at item four. I know it's been so long you forgot about uh, comments of a general nature, but here we are. Any members of the audience that have any questions or comments of a general nature with respect to things that are not on tonight's agenda, please come down to the podium, tell us who you are, and we welcome hearing from you. Are there any questions or comments of a general nature tonight? Exceptional. And we will just keep moving right along. Um, we will go to item five, which is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I tell you, I move that this council approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to any items on tonight's consent agenda? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Walder? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Burnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. Consent agenda passes unanimously. And that brings us to item six, which is our active agenda. We have several items on tonight's active agenda. First, item 6A, do I have a motion to adopt a resolution approving a final plat of subdivision for 2001 63rd Street? Mayor Tully, I move that this council adopt a resolution approving the final plat of subdivision for 2001 63rd Street as presented. Second. Questions or comments from members of the audience? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Commissioner Wallace. I have a comment, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I have some concerns about this development. Um, a couple of them being the exterior, exterior of the building. Um, I live on the south side of town. Uh, I drive past the shopping center quite often. Um, and I'm not worried about the building design. I don't really know enough about building design. I think it's a, a perfectly fine design building. Um, but I am worried about the durability and the aesthetics of the EFIS that is used mainly on the entire building. Um, and I'm concerned about this because we've identified this as a catalyst site in our village. Um, Walgreens is going to be the cornerstone of the Meadowbrook Shopping Center. Uh, and, and my concern is that we're settling here for the bare minimum. Um, I'm not looking to completely kill this. What I would like to do is refine it. Um, so, Mayor, I would like to make a motion to table this to a date certain in order to give staff the opportunity to potentially work with Walgreens on coming up with a different plan for the exterior of the building. Um, this clarification, date certain or date uncertain? Date you certain. Have, you, have a, you have a date yes. in mind? Yes, September 12th. All right, there's a motion to table this item until uh, September 12th. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, discussion. Questions or comments on the motion to amend? I, I'm sorry, the motion to table. There is, wait a minute, there is no discussion on the motion to table. I think that's right. That's right. 
I just wanted to talk. <laughs> well, so much. You missed the talk. Uh, there's no discussion on the motion to table to a date certain. That's the motion that's on the table. There's a motion and a second, so I will ask for a roll call. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner White? Nay. Commissioner Jose? Nay. Commissioner Barnett? Nay. Mayor Tully? Nay. The motion to table fails uh, three to four. Uh, so now we'll go back to the uh, motion that was originally made and seconded, which was for approval of item 6A, uh, resolution approving a final plat of subdivision for 2001 63rd Street. Are there any questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to this item? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Commissioner Jose. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just wanted to thank the folks from Walgreens for sticking with this. I know they've been looking to move the uh, facility that was on Belmont for quite some time. And they've uh, been looking at this particular intersection for quite some time. Um, we're getting some, I think, welcome renovations to the Meadowbrook Shopping Center along with it. I think the Walgreens here will be a very nice addition. Uh, and it's keeping sales tax right here in the village of Downers Grove, which is always a good thing. So uh, thanks for bringing this forward, and I look forward to supporting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments? Commissioner I, I have the same concerns as Commissioner Wallace about the um, exterior of the building, about um, the, the amount of EFIS and the durability of it, and um, we would like the shopping center to be coming up you know, and, and hoping that that Walgreens would be the shining jewel of the corner and that everything would be wanting to redevelop around it with with a nice look. And I just aesthetically do not like the way this Walgreens looks. I don't think it's um, uh, well um, crafted on the outside. I think it looks cheap. I'm sorry, but that's the way it looks. And um, I really feel like uh, the village is, you know, a lot of people, um, there's a lot of moving parts to this, I understand that, but I really kind of feel like the village is getting the short end of the stick by having to take a building that's um, less than ideal for something that's been identified as a catalyst site and has been so important in the comp plan for so long. On a site that's that's been, you know, <coughs> wanting to be redeveloped for so long. And um, I would just like something good to... Uh, to stand out there on the corner as opposed to just a mediocre look. So I will not be supporting this. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Barnett? Is EFIS allowed in our code? Yes. It is. Uh, are we spending any village money on this development? No. We're responsible for maintenance? No. Uh, I, this EFIS conversation comes up occasionally up here, and, and it borders, and from my perspective, on uh, really running far afoot of what our focus and our question is. We have a PUD amendment in front of us. Somebody comes to us with a building that meets our codes. If we want to change codes, we should have those code conversations at some other time, like perhaps later when we're going to talk about long, uh, high priority action items. We certainly could put that on the list. But this EFIS seems to come up when we have. Uh, people less than satisfied with either the process to the point or the end user and uh, it, look it's a it, this is permitted in our code that's it it's period it's not up to us to sit here and say you yeah, know well geez I wish they'd use something different from material type when it's a privately funded private property development that fits within our code uh, I'll be fully supportive of this and I'm thrilled as Greg said to, to <coughs> that Walgreens has stuck it out uh, I was certainly around when the other corner was considered and there were some real challenges there, and, uh, and I'm just thankful that they're still involved and, and going to be part of the future going forward. But saying, suggesting that the village is somehow settling, the village isn't doing anything except approving a PUD within our code, and, uh, and that's, that's the end of it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Wallach. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I, I totally disagree. And you know, my, my concern with the EFIS, I, I brought it up last time, and I appreciate staff uh, adding the language uh, that if it fails, that we have an opportunity or, or you know, we can force them to, uh, to, to fix it. Uh, but that's looking forward uh, in, in, in case it fails. But in the meantime, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, Commissioner Wallace and, and Commissioner Earl kind of opening my eyes to uh, to what we have here. 
uh, you have a PUD and we have other PUDs in town and just saying, oh well, you meet code, you're good. And we've done that for years and, and as long as I've been interested in, in uh, uh, village uh, business, either up here or as, or as an observer, uh, we've, the goal of, of the uh, uh, staff has always been to improve, you know, the, the, the public has demanded that we do something about these, these uh, uh, properties that are, that are substandard that we run into problems with. Now the theory that if you meet code, well, you're just fine. Well, years ago, uh, on 75th and Lamont, there was a plan for a, uh, uh, for a shopping center. And the council then thought that was a great idea, so they went ahead with it. Well, when it fell through, they were also okay with selling off the pieces and, and uh, you know, it all, ma all match code. And, and I don't blame the previous council for, for not looking or thinking that far ahead, because who would have thought that you'd wind up with, I don't know, 10, 10 or a dozen different owners, that you'd have a parking lot that was empty. I mean, it's all code. So we should just allow this stuff, and now we're paying for those, for those errors. And now we have a shopping center, the Meadowbrook, that, that people have demanded, not that we react to everything that comes in, because that's what we tend to do. We tend to react and stay, instead of taking the bulls by the horn. And, and the public has demanded all these years that we do something with that shopping center. Now granted, you know, I, I appreciate Wal Walgreens coming in. I think it'll be an improvement, but it's not going to be the savior of the shopping center. And, we, and when asked, oh, if we could get something a little better, you know, that looks a little better, that is probably going to last a little longer, because Walgreens picks up and moves. I mean, it's almost like a, uh, like a trailer, you know? If the, if the model changes from one corner, well, then they'll just leave that, leave the mess behind, and then move to another area. The question was asked uh, by one of the commissioners about, you know, are there other opportunities? Are there other uh, models? And no, this is the current prototype. Well, the current prototype in corporate America today is a race to the bottom. How cheap? Can I make it look decent now? And how cheaply can I do this? And that's not what we should be asking for in that center. We should be asking for an improvement. And the idea of tabling the, uh, uh, the process was to give it a few weeks to, you know, to, to explore something a little better, to ask the question. And we haven't asked that question. We just, they just came in with a prototype and we go, yeah, meets code, fine, go ahead. Well. Uh, I want I want to say yes to this, but you know I, I wanted to see more. I wanted to see some some other options, and uh, you know it's not just EFIS. I, I it's a catalyst site. It's not just the EFIS. It's the other appearance, and we have an opportunity to do something about it. And it's a shame if we don't. And so I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments, Commissioner White. I fall in between the comments that have been made so far. Um, contrary to Commissioner Barnett, I believe appearance and aesthetics is a legitimate concern at this particular site because we're looking for a project that will be a catalyst to move the, the to spur the redevelopment <coughs> of the center. I'll also say that if this was a two-party petition where we had the petitioner was the end user. I'd be far more inclined to spend more time getting this worked out, and I am disappointed that it came to the point where three commissioners feel that they really didn't have sufficient input into what it is that that's being presented. However, I'm also aware that this is actually a four-party tr tr transaction going on here, and all of us know who all the people are, and a lot of moving parts had to come together to get it to be here, and I'm not willing to derail all the effort that got us here, because I'm not sure if we wait a month we can put the pieces back together. So with considerable sympathy to what the three that are in opposition have to say, I will be supporting the, the, the entire project this evening. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments? Commissioner Barnett. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I, I apologize if I've missed the public's outcry for getting rid of EFIS. I haven't heard it. 
Um, and so I uh, guess I'll defer to my colleagues who have listened to the public's demands for no EFIS. Um, from my vantage point, EFIS is, is an acronym that it becomes entertaining to use to lay out there. There are EFIS, and there's EFIS, and there's EFIS, and there's 30 years worth of EFIS development. It's, it's, uh, and I'm trying to, st I'm struggling a little bit because I'm trying to figure out why it is that, that the gr this group of people with our expertise is in a position to suggest that this particular EFIS is in somehow superior, inferior, and therefore not acceptable for a private property transaction. We, the village, aren't doing anything here, guys. We aren't developing the site. We aren't in an agreement with Walgreens or Roundheads or the mall owner. We are simply responding to a request within our code. So I, I, I'll look forward to those conversations down the road where this group bans EFIS. Um, but for the moment, it is in our code bill, and, and it's pretty important. And uh, short of the public outcry that I haven't heard, I suppose maybe I would be persuaded if I'd heard it, but I haven't, so I'm happy to move forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Jose. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to express a bit of general concern at the concept that somehow we should be governed by something more than our code. Um, if there's a problem with our code, we should certainly fix it. Uh, but if a project comes in and it meets our code and we are voting against it uh, or turning it down because of some additional criteria, then I believe we've done the public a disservice and we've done the petitioner a disservice. Uh, certainly we can make the code as stringent as we want and that's up to the majority will of the council. But we have to live within the code as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments? Uh, I'm going to address two things. Uh, one, the motion to table because uh, we didn't have, or we're not to have any discussion on that. And then second of all is the, the merits of actually this item, which just for clarification, the only thing that's on the table right now is a motion to approve a final plat of subdivision for 2163rd Street. We haven't even gotten to the other pieces yet, which include the special use of the drive through which frankly, I think is the only place we can be having this conversation, if at all, and I think even that's a stretch. Um, but I understand that people have strong views on this. Um, I, I have the benefit of a lot of history with this issue coming up, coincidentally with these same parties, it seems, every time. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to that, because in each occasion, we ended up with nothing. Uh, this is a catalyst site, and we've been working very hard to get improvements to this site, and I think some of this stuff is not only beyond our code, but I think it's classic government overreach, in my opinion. Uh, if we want to legislate taste and legislate design, then let's get about legislating that. But that's not what the rules are, and you can't tell people here the rules. They show up with a project that meets the rules, and suddenly, mm, gee, I don't like your roof line. I'm going to deny your project. Imagine if you were a person who bought a lot here in Downers Grove and were building a home, and suddenly your neighbors ran to the village council and said, well, we don't like the color of your paint, deny this house. That's outrageous. I sympathize with the desire of some of my colleagues to want to improve aesthetics. We all do. Uh, but it's really a tough business to start legislating taste, and I think that's dangerously close to what we're talking about here. Um, I think we should, as was pointed out, we're basically a uh, facilitator of a request from private parties with respect to private property to whether or not it meets certain criteria. And the one thing that we have a lot of leeway on is our special use ordinance for the drive through which we haven't even gotten to yet, uh, where we can take in different factors such as impact in the neighborhood and a whole bunch of other things, and then we can put in conditions to try to ameliorate those issues if we think they're, they're significant enough. Um, I understand we we're kind of talking about all of this together, but it really has very little to do with approving the final plot of subdivision, number one. Uh, it doesn't have much to do with the PUD amendment either. Uh, it, 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 it is, in my opinion, it's a reach to even talk about it in terms of the, the special use of the drive-through, um, which is item C if, if we, when we get there. Um, I, I don't have a problem with this. I, I did, was not in favor of tabling, and I understand why my, I don't fault my colleagues for wanting to put this off, but my serious concern is, number one, that it would not accomplish anything. Number two, other than accomplish perhaps losing the project, and not only would we not have something that um, perhaps isn't uh, in a term of degrees where some would like it, it would be flatlined. And we would continue to have the same issue there and our catalyst opportunity would be lost. Uh, and maybe I have the benefit of history in, in having that belief and others don't, uh, but that's the way it is. Uh, if we truly want to uh, legislate design and taste, then th those are rules that we don't have right now. 
Um, I understand that there are some who feel very strongly about that, and then I suggest that we make those rules apparent to all to know about before they come to us with a proposal, because to do otherwise is unfair and inequitable. Um, and I think we'll also eventually scare away opportunities from our community, because folks will, will view us as having a reputation of, okay, Downers Grove puts out the rules, but gosh, depending on the seven people that are sitting up on that table, mm, you may or may not get approval, because someone likes one style and someone likes another style, uh, and that's, as they say, uh, just no way to run a government, in my opinion. Uh, so I was not in favor of the motion table for that reason, uh, although I, again, don't fault my colleagues for seeking it, uh, nor do I, nor am I not sympathetic to understanding where it comes from. Uh, but I also think this is a project that, when we get to the various pieces, will actually accomplish a goal of the comprehensive plan and of the catalyst, catalyst site um, aspects of it. Um, and it's a matter of degrees, ladies and gentlemen. It may not be 110 percent, but it's, in, in other people's views, 80 percent. And to me, that's a heck of a lot better than what's currently going on there right now. And I think we owe it to the community to move forward, as well as these petitioners who have been very patient in, in working through this process. Um, so I'm sure that we'll have opportunities to have this conversation again as different items come up. And as was mentioned by, I forget who, we are going to go into our long-range planning. And if one of the topics is having mandatory design guidelines for all construction in the village from now going forward, then that's one of the things that we seven can decide that we want to get about doing. Um, but right now, that's not the state of affairs. Uh, so with that, um, I will ask for a roll call. Oh, yes, please. Um, I, I, I agree with much of what you said. But the fact is, is that they're coming in here and asking us for one, two, three, four, five, besides the drive through which is a special use. So in, in a, within a, when you're putting something in a PUD, typically, you can go above and beyond code. It, it does. It, it, there are give and takes, and um, this is this is a PUD. This is they're asking us for a drive-through, which is a special use. I, I didn't think that it was so far um, out of line to ask for something in return. You know, maybe less EFIS on the building. So, uh, uh, some it, with an eye towards durability. Um, so that this will be a lasting building and, and not, I mean, you go to other suburbs, yes, they, they do have design guidelines and whether we go there or not, yes, but everything, everything is, is negotiable in a PUD, as they say, and, um, and, and when they're asking us for, for things, I don't see why we can't ask for something as well. So that's, that's my whole... Um, my little speech there, so I, 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 I just think that we we have the right to ask um, with the process we have now, whether it's already code or not. Sure, I understand. I, I just happen to disagree with that analysis, particularly on a, a motion to approve a final plot of subdivision. We're not even to any items that have been mentioned yet, uh, but I understand we're, we're lumping all this together. Um, point is, this is my opinion, if, if we want to have those kind of rules, then we should have those rules and put them out there. Uh, the ask, as you put it, Commissioner, should not be left to the subjective whims of whoever happens to be sitting here. Uh, we should have them well-defined, and they should be out there to manage the expectation of both uh, the residents as well as petitioners in our community, and that's what makes me very uncomfortable. It's, it smacks to me of legislative taste, which is not something I'm in favor of doing. I think it's classic government overreach, in my opinion. So whether you think we have the right to do it, they also have the right to, to put forward. I mean, there's a lot of different rights at, at, at issue here. This is just the way I choose to balance them. And I, I understand and respect that others may choose to balance them differently. Anything else? Have a roll call, please. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Nay. Commissioner Earl? Nay. Commissioner Waldeck? Nay. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The matter passes 4 to 3. That brings to item 6, B as in boy. We have a motion to adopt an ordinance approving an amendment to plan unit development number 1 to allow construction of the convenience store with a drive through at 2163rd Street. Mayor Tully, I move that this council adopt an ordinance approving an amendment to plan unit development number 1 to allow construction of the convenience store with a drive through at 2163rd Street as presented. Second. Questions or comments on this item from members of the audience? Questions or comments on this from the council? There's any more? Yeah, we've already been through it. Incorporate. Incorporate. I, I assume as much. <laughs> I assume that they addressed all, all of the active agenda tonight. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner White? Aye. 
Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Nay. Commissioner Earl? Nay. Commissioner Waldeck? Nay. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The matter passes 4 to 3. That brings us to item 6 C as in Charlie. We have a motion to adopt an ordinance authorizing a special use for 2001 63rd Street to permit a convenience store with a drive through Mayor Tully, I move that this council adopt an ordinance authorizing a special use for 2001 63rd Street to, to permit a convenience store with drive through as presented. Second. Questions or comments from members of the audience? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council beyond what's already been said? Uh, I'll just add with respect to the special use requirement for the drive through I did appreciate the conversation took place last time as well as the additional information that was provided with respect to the drive through specifically and some of the concerns were raised and in my opinion they've been satisfactorily addressed. But uh, I appreciate those, those coming up in terms of potential impact of headlights and things of that nature, um, which in some other instances could have a detrimental impact in the neighborhood, but not here. Roll call, please. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Nay. Commissioner Earl? Nay. Commissioner Waldeck? Nay. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The matter also passes four to three. That brings us to item 60 is in David. Do I have a motion to adopt an ordinance approving an amendment to plan unit development number eight to allow parking lot and facade improvements in the Meadowbrook Shopping Center? Attorney, I move this council adopt an ordinance approving an amendment to plan unit development eight, the development number eight to allow parking lot and facade improvements in the Meadowbrook Shopping Center as presented. Second. Questions or comments from the audience? Who can be event against improving the parking lot and the shopping center? Not this kid. Any good questions or comments from members of the council? Roll call, please. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The matter passed unanimously. See, we can't agree on things. That brings us to the end of our active agenda and to item seven, which is our first reading of our workshop agenda. This Thank is the you. portion of the meeting that um, is more informal. This is where items are presented to us for uh, discussion purposes only. We switch things up a little differently at this part of the meeting. It's uh, typically staff will present or the petitioner will present the matter in question. The council will ask questions and then we'll open it up for questions from the audience before coming back to the council. As is customary, our village manager, Dave Fieldman, good evening, sir. Good or evening, Mayor. someone that you may designate will present the items on tonight's first reading agenda, of which we have several. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Nan Newland, our Public Works Director, will present information on the first item, an award of contract for drainage improvements in the West Burlington area. Nan. Good evening, Ms. Newland. How are you tonight? Fine. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, item A is award of a contract for improvements to the West Burlington drainage area um, to A-Lamp Concrete Contractors of Schaumburg, Illinois, in the amount of $940,746.05. Uh, this project was identified in the village's stormwater project analysis from 2014, which was uh, following the 2013 floods in April. Um, in this uh, report, the village did identify two projects which are being included in this um, work tonight. Um, these are on Chase and on Francisco, and they're shown on this exhibit on the report. It's also shown in this exhibit here. You can see these are downstream of the uh, Park District Golf Course where there's considerable runoff. Um, they're just upstream of the Burlington Northern Tracks which act as a barrier for drainage. Um, the water sheet flows from the north and is collected down these streets and then eventually makes its way across the railroad tracks. Like other projects in this analysis, both of these areas currently lack stormwater infrastructure required to provide the suggested level of service to safely convey and store water for the 90 and 95 percent rain events. In the case, uh, this is just a, a blow up of these areas, it's south of Haddow, between Haddow and Burlington in both cases. Project number eight from the report and project number 17. In both cases, uh, we have runoff from the golf course, the storm sewers are undersized or either not existing. Um, we don't have sufficient inlet capacity, and in many cases there aren't ditches or overland flow routes to convey the runoff. In the case of Francisco, similarly, storm sewer pipes lacking, lacking ditches, and um, there's insufficient routing of the water around the homes. These are a couple of photos that we've collected um, as a result of further investigation in this area after some rain events. 
And in both cases, the improvements include installing conveyance systems, which are both storm sewers, inlets, culverts, and ditches. Um, they will convey the storm water for the smaller rain events. The ditches will convey the runoff for the larger events. Um, these improvements will help facilitate cost share projects by uh, providing connection points for homeowners to uh, further improve drainage around their, their structures. And in both cases, the um, uh, drainage will be directed toward the railroad tracks. Um, staff advertised for bids. We did receive eight bidders. A-LAMP was the low bid. And um, they have satisfactorily completed various pro similar projects for the village over the past five years, including the uh, road reconstructions at Brook and Center, which had extensive stormwater improvements, um, Burlington Road reconstruction, and most re recently, the Clyde Estates reconstruction project. And uh, we're here to recommend approval of this contract to ALAMP, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much, Nan. Questions from the council about the stormwater project? We all, we all like stormwater projects. <laughs> questions are necessary. What's that? They're absolutely necessary. I'm not sure I like that, but they're absolutely necessary. <laughs> we like when they we like happen. Because they're necessary. We like, yes. We like that they're because absolutely they're necessary. necessary. Ooh, we have to do them. But yes. Like breathing. We believe they have to do with them. Questions from the audience? <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Uh, the next several items will be presented by Stan Popovich, our Community Development Director, starting with the request for a special use at 1644 Ogden Avenue. Stan. Good evening, Mr. Popovich. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council Members. As Manager Fieldman noted, the first request is a special use at 1644 Ogden. It's on the west side of, north side of Ogden, the western part of town here between uh, Lee and Downers Drive. Uh, the property is uh, one uh, building to the east of Lee Avenue. It's a one-story building. Uh, what the petitioner is proposing to do is uh, take the existing building here, uh, shown in this picture, and renovate it into a, a new facade here, uh, repair the existing brick and add some newer windows, uh, replace the uh, front front door there, make it a more attractive building. Uh, and then this is a side view, so additionally add some windows on the side of the building. Um, there's a garage door on the side there uh, that's uh, a, sort of a light color as well. Uh, to make some improvements for an automobile dealership at this location. Uh, if we look at the site plan, the site is shown here in red. The building itself is in blue. It takes up uh, from lot line to lot line running east to west. Uh, there is one curb cut onto Ogden Avenue that's proposed to remain. It's the property's only curb cut. Uh, there is a 10-foot uh, shared cross-access easement uh, with the neighboring property to the west. Um, so there's access to get uh, proper, uh, to get Customers, or I, this is actually going to be employee parking in the back of the building there. Excuse me for that. And then additionally, they're adding green space uh, to add some, a little bit of green space into the property, some in the front, uh, some on the east side, uh, one of the parking islands, and then the back as well in the rear to add some landscaping onto the site that's pretty well paved at this point. Uh, with regard to the comprehensive plan, uh, it's a corridor commercial use, which is an <laughs> auto-oriented use, service and retail, uh, regional and local customers. There's existing cross access on the site, which is good. Uh, and then also the, so there are site improvements with additional landscape and then beautifying the building itself as well. Uh, with regard to special use criteria, staff believes that those have been met. Uh, the petitioners are here tonight as well to talk. If there's any questions for me at this time, I can answer those. Thank you for the presentation. Questions or comments from the council? Um, my only question or comment I should say is with respect to the uh, test driving issue uh, particularly down Lee Avenue uh, because this is a special use that's being requested in item 7b uh, the uh, test driving can have and has had a negative impact upon the neighborhood as well as on loading, loading vehicles down there so I am very pleased to see that one of the conditions of this special use uh, is that all test drives should be limited to the arterial streets which are uh, specified and none of them are Lee Avenue uh, because that has been a chronic issue uh, over the years and is one that I do not want to see continue. Uh, and as special uses work, if that is not complied with, then it can risk um, uh, eliminating the special use, and that would obviously uh, be a big problem, uh, undesirable outcome. Uh, so I'm glad to see that that's in here. Other questions or comments from the council? Questions or comments from the audience? Or from the petitioner, please. 
Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, my name is Louis Cangel. I'm, uh, I'm the one who's the, uh, doing the project, actually. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, when we when we were here uh, in July uh, with the commission meeting, uh, they raised a very valid concern that we should not be penalized for someone else's action as far as the test drives. Sometimes we give out a two-seater car to a husband and wife and they will go, I mean, we, we, we will instruct them to go in a certain direction and they might go in a different direction. So what we did to resolve the issue and not have it as a liability, because you can't have your whole business revoked because someone drove on a, on a regular or on a residential street. Uh, what we did is we did a map, and I, I don't know if it's here today, uh, but we did a map of a test drive where we would like it to be, it'll stay on Ogden Avenue to Highland, Highland to Butterfield, Butterfield going back to Finley or Belmont, going down back to Ogden Avenue and back to our, so it's all on major arteries, not, not on any residential streets. And we did a disclaimer on the bottom that tells the customer that it's not allowed to drive on any residential street. That's in case if they go without a salesperson. So what, what uh, the members suggested that we would put in there uh, for the special use, uh, 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 something that will say that we will do our best. We will we will have to do our best and do everything we can to prevent it, but we can't have our livelihood based on somebody that might make a mistake and go down the wrong road, and then you know we have our special use yanked. So, sure, I, I understand that, and I'm actually uh, strongly in favor of the language that exists here right now. Uh, I don't think best efforts is enough. Uh, it hasn't been historically, quite frankly, um, and I, this is something that's been an issue for years. Uh, I'm not talking about the situation where, hypothetically, a customer is fully informed. And number one, the number of instances where someone is not the salesperson should be the exception, not the rule to begin with. That's correct. Right. Number two, in those situations where, for whatever reason, the vehicle cannot hold more than two people and there's a husband and wife or two people together who are not the salesperson. Uh, I'm not talking about the situation where they've been clearly advised what the situation is and decide to violate it. I'm talking about the hypothetical situation where when asked, they are told, I don't know what you're talking about. No one ever told me that I couldn't drive down here. I was not given a map. I don't know anything about it. That's the situation I'm talking about avoiding. And I think that, that right now the language, I think is sufficiently I think it's sufficiently direct that uh, hopefully will eliminate issues that we've had over the years. And ultimately, whether or not someone's livelihood is eliminated or not would be dependent upon the decision of the entire council. Of course. Uh, I just wanted to uh, let you know that we will do everything we I can to I fully appreciate the, that, and uh, I would expect nothing less, and I thank you for reaffirming that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments from members of the audience? Final questions for the council? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Stan. Stan, Bob. I, I was just I was just going to come up and go to the next item. It seemed like we were ready, but if you're not, <laughs> I was just trying to. Sure what what wasn't clear if we were going on the next <laughs> item or, or not? I do have a question, Commissioner Barnett. Uh, how do we see? Um, I, you know, the mayor's, mayor's point about process and revocation is, is important for everybody to understand it, it. It would be this council's action, again, that would do so. Um, and hopefully that would inject into the process a certain amount of due process, if you will. Um, but what, what is the, uh, how do we envision, obviously we all envision everybody following the rules, but, but for that, is this a thing that comes to our attention as a function of us monitoring some way? Is it a function of, of you know, Police citations. What, how, how does this come to? Uh, well, how do we see this ever coming to us? If in fact it would, right. hypothetically, the neighbors call us. Well, yeah, and that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, so because a, hypothetically, the neighbors calling us. Hypothetically, every time I've driven a car, I, I pretty much almost insist on going without a sales guy because I'm going to pull over on a side street and open the trunk and screw around. I mean, it's it's kind of part of the nature. I mean, the, the folks that are running the business, we will hope they do their best. But how would we? 
couple of neighbors call and now it's an issue, then what? And so we respond to enforcement of these types of conditions on special use, both from a uh, response to requests from neighbors uh, and proactive patrolling where we've informed our police officers and community development code enforcement officers of the condition and we're trained to look for those things. So it comes to it both ways, proactive and in response. We have a couple of venues in which to enforce those codes. Uh, option one is to go through the uh, county court system and issue a citation for a violation of the zoning ordinance through the special use ordinance. Uh, that is the route we normally take. If we get a series of violations where it's becoming a chronic issue, we can schedule uh, a hearing in front of this council to amend or revoke the special use. And we would look to go through a due process, uh, obviously seeking first to amend to address the issue at hand. And revocation is an option, but it's something that's uh, used sparingly. Uh, in fact, I don't think we've revoked one here, but we've had some success with enforcing in other ways. Thank you. I have a thought or a question that actually occurred to me while I'm sitting here, and maybe uh, staff can say whether this is feasible or not. But could we add a requirement that whenever there's a test drive without a salesperson present, that they sign a statement acknowledging the map before they're given the keys? Yes. And then, and then, and then that way, if somebody driving the car in a, in a test drive gets stopped by the police, you go to the dealer and there'll be a statement they sign saying they understand, that they understood before they got the keys that they weren't supposed to go down these streets. I don't, I don't know how, how burdensome that would be, but it seemed to me that then there'd be no dispute of who, who, who told who what. Yeah, I've seen, I'm familiar with that process. It's been done before. Yep. Oh, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Commissioner Waldeck, please. Thank you. Quick, quick question regarding all of these is they all meet code as presented. Yeah, yes, as as proposed, yes. We're okay. putting more rules on them. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor. Commissioner Jose. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the petitioner pointed out a, a map uh, that he referenced. I didn't see it in the packet for this particular item, but if you look at just for the public, that anybody that may be looking, if you look um, the next item for 1723 Ogden Avenue, it's actually the last page of the PDF, uh, so that map is available publicly. Thanks, man. Th thank you. And I'm also not trying to tell what color the map should be or what paper it's printed on or what font the letters should be in, uh, but we do have evidence of something that has, has had a negative impact upon a neighborhood that's well documented, and we can address that through our special use ordinance as we have for decades. Other questions or comments? And Stan wants to go to the next item. <laughs> At your pleasure, Mayor. So, <laughs> I did not mean to jump the gun, but I apologize. Uh, the next item, the next two items actually are rezoning and a special use amendment for 1723 Ogden Avenue. 1723 is at the southwest corner of Lee and Ogden Avenue. You remember, may remember about this time last year, actually in June of uh, last year, uh, special use was approved for this property here. It's an L-shaped property, Ogden Avenue on the north, on the top of the screen there. Uh, the petitioner is uh, under contract to purchase this other parcel here, uh, which fronts Lee Avenue. Uh, this is again shown outlined here in green. You'll see the majority of the parcel that was previously approved for special use is B3. And then the parcel uh, is yellow here that's being added to the properties in R1 zoning classification. Uh, so what uh, the, and currently what the current situation is, there's four buildings on the property. Uh, and there's a curb cut on Lee. There's a curb cut on Ogden. Uh, there's one large curb cut on Ogden on the west side there and that property there. Uh, what the petitioner is proposing to do is take the existing building and, and renovate the building, uh, tear down the three buildings on the west property and uh, build this new building that's shown here in the picture. The uh, site plan shown here with the building in blue, the new portion of the lot is the lower right here in the red box to the lower right. Uh, previously, this area where the building, the front designs pretty much stayed the same. The rear designs changed a little bit to maximize parking now that they're purchasing the, the property to the lower right. Um, they're staying out of the wetland, uh, so there's a wetland further south. Uh, and then uh, on the buffer as well, working with the buffer and buffer and wetland buffer. Uh, the property, the parking lot will be a permeable paver parking lot, so that will help with some stormwater uh, uniqueness that's occurring out there. 
You'll see we've got a curb cut on Lee that moves the curb cut further south. This helps facilitate a car carrier to come out. You'll notice that the curbing is set up so it, it turns towards the north uh, to orient north, so it'd be a little bit harder to try to make that left turn to go south on Lee. And then additionally, there's a no, no right turn sign at that location to uh, further facilitate no turn south on Lee. Uh, there's one curb cut on Ogden, so we're eliminating a lot of the curb cuts. And then there's a proposed uh, connection here to the existing PacuWeb dealership that's currently under construction. Uh, this is the path that the car carrier could take, so they could come in off of Ogden, pull around the building in a counterclockwise manner, unload off the back or off the side, and then exit on to lead towards Ogden Avenue there again, so this will help facilitate car deliveries on site. Uh, with regard to the comprehensive plan, very similar to the last one, a couple of different ones in here, though. We're reducing the number of curb cuts onto Ogden Avenue. We're creating a cross access here, and we're expanding commercial depth. Uh, which is important as many of our lots on Ogden are, are short, sort of uh, short. Uh, with regard to the zoning ordinance requirements, the zoning map amendment criteria shown here have been met as well as the special use criteria. If there's any uh, questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer those, those for you and the petitioners for this petition is here as well. Thank you, Stan. Uh, questions from the council? Commissioner Earl. This petitioner is the same as the last petitioner, correct? No, this is a different petitioner. Correct. Other questions from the council? Questions from the audience or comments from the petitioner? <coughs> Final questions from the council? I just want to make just, just a brief comment that if um, we are successful um, in adding a provision that Test drive people test driving without a salesperson has to sign some type of acknowledgement of the maps. Then I might be less inclined to want changes to the curbs because we we, we, have, a, we have an alternate way of of, of 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 enforcing that, and we don't want to keep the trucks being able to load off site. I mean on, on site instead of on the street. Thank you, Commissioner. Other comments, questions. We're going to take that as direction on both petitions to put add the condition about the signed statement for test drives. That's what I'm hearing from the council on that. Uh, let, let's discuss that further. Okay. I want to give that some thought, well, at least from my perspective. I'm not, not, I think it's a good idea. I just want to noodle on it, as they say. Yeah, and that's 10 minutes old, so. Exactly. <laughs> well, okay. for the record, I like it. I like it, too. I just said I did, and I just <laughs> want to think about old. it. There's this old, there's old thing about unintended consequences. I just want to make sure it's been well thought. Born yesterday, Paul nice today. Well, if we put it in the right font, I think it might be okay. <laughs> in the right color. Helvetica, please. Oh, no, well, actually, it, it better be, the press better be red. <laughs> uh, that ends our first reading. Time. Thank goodness. Thank you. All right, thank you. That brings us to item eight, the mayor's report. Uh, uh, two items, one that's on the agenda, another one that I'm going to add as part of my report, but let's get uh, business uh, taken care of first. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt a resolution appointing uh, Gregory Jose as council liaison to the Economic Development Corporation? Until I move that this council appoint, appoint Gregory Jose as council liaison to the Economic Development Corporation. Second. Any questions or comments, discussion from the council? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Burnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. I don't want this job. Did you have to abstain or something? <laughs> I thought about abstaining. <laughs> I should have asked the question first. <laughs> well, congratulations and thank you for uh, serving in that role. I know you need another meeting in your life. Yeah, of course. And thank you for the appointment. I thank the entire council for your confidence. Yeah, it's, an, it's, an important, uh, it's an important position. Thank you for doing it. Uh, with that, uh, I just want to do, uh, well, you know, I'll do it now because we'll come back after council member reports. You know what? Maybe I'll do it. No, I'll do it right now. Uh, That's what they're going to do. I'm going to do good, Commissioner White. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that segue. Yeah. Um, tonight, uh, Giving New Page, which is a not for profit. Uh, 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 organization uh, serving all of DuPage County kicked off their um, Do Good DuPage campaign, which as you can see here displayed in the shirt. Uh, Giving DuPage uh, coordinates a number of different um, uh, service organizations and uh, 
good deeds throughout DuPage County and, and probably has not received the attention or uh, uh, participation that, that it deserves. Some communities have utilized uh, aspects of, of giving DuPage to assist with various projects in their own communities, coordinating either with municipal governments or with other non-for-profits, private, private organizations, corporations, et cetera, et cetera, as well as individual residents. And they're kicking off a big campaign. Um, and so I would encourage people to learn more about Giving DuPage by going to the Giving DuPage website, which is conveniently printed on the shirt of givingdupage.org. It'll tell you all more, more about the, the organization. But here's the deal. Um, they have an initiative uh, that is a challenge to basically everybody in DuPage County that for the period of the initiative, which is I think about a year, they are challenging to come up with 150,000 people in DuPage County that will do good, do some form of public service. It doesn't have to be anything huge. It doesn't have to be writing a check. It could be um, uh, doing a, a street pickup with a few Boy Scouts. Uh, all kinds of different things will, will uh, qualify. And they want to keep track of this. And this is their goal is to reach this, 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 uh, this objective. And it was kicked off tonight by uh, DuPage County Chairman uh, Dan Cronin. And there were a few other mayors uh, that were there with me that all sort of entered into a friendly outdo the do-gooders where uh, I kind of threw down a gauntlet and challenged uh, Addison, West Chicago, Woodridge, and Hanover Park uh, to a little bit of a contest. I did not pick on Naperville because they have, they, they're three times our size. <laughs> and if everybody in Naperville did it, they would win right there because there's 150,000 people in Naperville. But we have 49,000, so we've got a big head start on these other communities. Now, I might form an alliance if you've ever played the game for you know, uh, uh, diplomacy in, in high school or afterwards. I think I might form an alliance with the mayor of Woodridge, Gina Cunningham, and maybe take on Addison and Hanover Park and West Chicago. But the real goal is to uh, in, embrace and um, s elicit champions of this initiative throughout the community, uh, superintendents of schools, uh, the sanitary district, the park districts, the chambers of commerce, uh, faith-based organizations, uh, municipalities, of course, uh, you name it. Everybody is being asked to rise to the challenge and participate in order to come up with this 150,000 uh, people. And we'll be doing various things throughout the course of, as I look at, at Manager Fieldman, we're going to be doing various things throughout the course of this, such as uh, proclamations for supporting Giving Tuesday and other volunteer days of service. Uh, certainly one that we will do, as we always do, uh, encouraging residents to participate in Martin Luther King Day of Service in January. Um, I'm sure Mr. Kozlowski and others will, will work with me on putting uh, the initiative on our newsletter and website and cable. There's a, a very nice video. It's not a short, short format video, so, but it's, it's, it's do-gooder, so you'll just have to give them some slack here. Uh, but I also want to say that we've already taken the lead and are leading by example, as Downers Grove is apt to do, because our very own District 99, Downers Grove North, is already working with Giving DuPage to host a service event uh, as part of the Downers Grove North High School's third annual DGN Gives Back service event that's taking place on Saturday, October 14th. Uh, this event will include over 250 students, parents, and faculty to volunteer in multiple places for service projects. And this is already one of the things that uh, is kicking off this program, and they want to see more things like this, but it doesn't have to be that big. It could be uh, four people in a household and a family doing something. The idea is to try to keep track of it and, and, and keep this friendly competition going on that, frankly, um, as the world of politics can feel a little bit more hostile these days, uh, random acts of kindness are more important now than ever before, and this is a fantastic chance for those acts to be more kind and less random and more organized. Uh, so I would extend this challenge to everyone uh, here in the room, my colleagues and staff as well, uh, and there are already things that we do that can be incorporated in, in part of this. For example, we do a coat drive every year here in the village. There are other things like that that will count towards this. So we want to make sure that we, we include them. And also, anyone watching at home, this is the first uh, kickoff of the program. It was really the champions kickoff. And, and now we're all supposed to go out and uh, spread the good word to do good throughout DuPage County. So I think this could be really cool. And I think Donners Grove could play a big role in it. Um, I think we're going to find out there's already a lot going on um, that is already being coordinated. And the fact that this may, at worst, highlight some of the good things that are going on through different service, service organizations and charitable organizations throughout DuPage County, all the better. So more to come on that. Uh, you'll hear me touching base and speaking on it. And I would encourage anyone else who wishes to get involved in any way, shape, or form, uh, please do. 
They would love to hear from Downers Grove. Uh, again, it's uh, givingdupage.org is the website, and the um, campaign is Do Good DuPage, and there's even a hashtag right on the shirt. Um, if everybody lines up, I'll even get you a fancy schmancy shirt. So thank you for uh, your patience and indulging me, uh, and I hope you don't mind that I've already committed you to this. <laughs> Now that uh, ends the mayor's report and brings us to the next item, which is item nine, our village attorney's report. Good evening, Ms. Petrarca. Good evening, Mayor. Three items to present this evening. The first is an ordinance authorizing a special use for 1644 Ogden Avenue to permit an automobile dealership, an ordinance rezoning certain property located at 1723 Ogden Avenue, and an ordinance amending ordinance number 5539 authorizing a special use for 1723 Ogden Avenue to permit an automobile dealership. They will all appear on next week's active agenda. Thank you, Mayor. That is all. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That then brings us to item 10, which is reserved for council member reports. This is an opportunity for members of the village council to either share uh, items of interest or other goings on in the community with those who are present, like Do Good, Do Page, or to report out in their uh, brand new, newly minted positions as council liaisons to <laughs> things like the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, so I'll start with uh, Commissioner Barnett on my left. Anything to report tonight? Mayor, I don't have anything to report, but I'm, uh, I'm heartened by tonight's uh, unanimous vote on, on Greg's appointment to the EDC. That's a good step forward in teamwork, and, uh, and it's encouraging. And, uh, and, and following up with your conversations about Do Good, Do Page, I'm, I'm looking at their website here. Choose your Do Good idea and do your good deed. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should collectively do one. Find something to do as a group, build a little bit of additional teamwork, and... Uh, and at the same time do some good. So I'd, I'd encourage us all uh, with your leadership to think through that a little bit. Maybe it'll be an opportunity for us to do, you know, corporately as, as the council. Uh, you want to talk about leading by example? Let's do one. Let's, let's do good DG. I let's like do it. good DG. I like it. Let's uh, noodle on that and come up with a good example. Uh, I'm sure there are an abundance of them. Thank you. Commissioner Earl. Thank you. Commissioner White. No report. Commissioner Jose. Thank you, Mayor. I want an extensive report on the EDC. I'll, as soon as I go to my first meeting. Um, <laughs> at, uh, thinking about uh, prior liaison appointments, I had been the liaison to the park district, and uh, they've been working, you talk about cooperation and doing good. Uh, they've been putting on <clears throat> Safety Town in conjunction with the Downers Grove uh, Junior Women's Club and a lot of help from folks from the village and other organizations, uh, whether it's from uh, the Bicycle Club or the Police Department or the Fire Department. Uh, and a lot of student volunteers from uh, uh, District 99's North and South High Schools. And I think they've been doing an awful lot of good, and I think things are going well. So I think uh, we ought to add that to the list of hashtag do good. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Wallach. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, few items all having to do with the downtown management. Uh, I'm sad to announce the passing on August 4th of Rosa Hudson, who's a property and business owner of the Hair Studio 1 and Nail Studio 2 on Forest Avenue. Uh, keep her and her family in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, arrangements uh, can be found on the uh, uh, Downtown Management website, uh, www.downtowndg.org. Okay, and we have one more meeting this month, and folks like to plan ahead uh, for your calendars. So the 41st annual 41st already. Fine Arts Festival will be held Saturday and Sunday, September 9th and 10th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days. It'll feature about 50 nationally known artists. So far, uh, 50, maybe more. Uh, it'll be on Main Street between Curtis and Grove and included are ceramics, photography, furniture, glass, paintings, fiber art, and jewelry. So, that's something you want to put on your calendar. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and it's not only a great event to attend, but uh, in the spirit of volunteering that we've heard about, it's a fabulous opportunity to volunteer. It's one weekend. Uh, there are multiple shifts available Saturday from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. You don't have to spend the whole time, but you know, if you like, instead of running early in the morning, maybe you can volunteer. Uh, 5 p.m. On and on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So you can help the village, you can help the downtown management group, and maybe you can spot a treasure as well. Uh, once again, cont 
contact the downtown management at 630-725-0991 or check out www.downtowndg.org. And one more, ladies, having the daytime blues, need a little attitude adjustment, shake up the humdrums. Also coming up in September is another girls' day out. Girls' day out. It's uh, almost the end of summer, and fall is approaching, and you need to get out. So that's a great opportunity to get out there. Uh, and you can check for details on the website as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Waldeck. That was so well delivered. I'm going to nominate you to deliver our daily announcements over the intercom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you change your mind if you hear my phone message. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Wallace. No report, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other further report other than uh, uh, what Commissioner Waldeck said reminds me that we should figure out a way to keep track so when people do volunteer for something, we can, we can add them to our, our meter. I know that Mayor Ruben Pineda in West Chicago already has a system where he's going to keep track and publish results, and he's going to start waving around in our face. So we're going to have to so we're going to have to, so. we're going to have to get with it. But I think we can do it. I think it'll be it'll be good for everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Commissioner Barnett's idea. We'll keep track of our, our volunteers, many of which who are already volunteering in our community in a variety of ways. And I think we'll all be blown away by how much volunteer service actually takes place in our town. Uh, I have nothing further uh, at this point uh, in terms of uh, report, but uh, we cannot adjourn tonight. We are going to uh, recess to the committee room to have a discussion as we do every year with respect to our long-range plan priority action items. It'll be our first meeting on that topic. Um, we do this every year. It's part of the items that we will uh, basically come up with the to-do list for the next year or so. And it's very important to do it now because it has a big impact on what our budget will be going forward. So this is the sequence of events. For those that are here would like to join us after a brief break in the committee room for the long range plan priority action item. We have to come up with a better acronym from that. <laughs> um, please do so. But at this moment, uh, I will ask for a motion to recess to the committee room to pick up on that conversation. Until I move the council to recess to the committee room. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion to recess has been granted, and we are recessing next door. For those watching at home, thank you and good night. Okay. All right, we are back on the record, so to speak. Welcome to the committee room. We are resuming the meeting to begin, as discussed, our conversation about our strategic long-range High priority action items for the uh, basically the balance of this council, right? That's correct for the next 20 months or so. Next 20 months. Uh, so, um, for those of you playing at home, or am I going to take all your thunder here by telling you Keep how going, this process works? No, it's okay. all good. <clears throat> the way this works is the staff diligently reaches out to each of the council members uh, separately in advance to get an idea of what we might have in mind in terms of long range high priority action items. Now, one thing I'll mention is that we don't have high, medium, and low priority action items because we decided it's not PC to have any low priority actions. So we have really have high and really high. That's kind of a joke, but uh, what the idea here is that uh, we're going to try to come up with items that we can all agree that the staff and the village resources should be devoted towards accomplishing in addition to the day-to-day -day things that they do anyway, such as plowing snow and answering 911 calls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but these are these are projects and kind of a to-do list that we would like to get done over the designated period of time within the resources that we have available. Um, and obviously, there's always, given seven people, uh, more ideas. And having lots of ideas means you're guaranteed to have good ideas. So what staff has done is they've uh, captured, as best they can, a number of different ideas, understanding we can't do all of these and that we may not all agree on everything. Uh, but we will certainly come out of today, or if not today, shortly, with a, a handful of items that we can all agree should be things that staff should give high priority attention to accomplishing over the next 20 months. Did I summarize that more or less accurately? Very well done, Mayor. Thank you. I would just add to that that traditionally we've limited the list to 12, and that's because in the 10 years we've been doing it like this, we've never done more than 12 in any given time frame. Uh, the comment uh, building on that is we're not obligated to 12 so if we get to the point where we have concurrence and council direction on fewer than 12 
that's fine too. What we'll do if that happens is we'll just report out more often. If we happen to blow through a list that's shorter than 12 and we get done in 10 or 12 months, then we can just continue the discussion at that point. So no more than 12, but it's not an obligation to get to 12. I think it's more important to come up with a list of right. actions that are supported by the council. We will continue to provide you regular updates. Uh, we do have hard copies of the report that supports this, so you can take notes on it. It includes the ideas that were generated by council members through formal and informal conversations. Uh, we're also not limited to anything on, on here. It's an open forum. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. And one other thing to add is one of the reasons why we try to keep this somewhat flexible is we, we, we cannot predict what's going to happen over the next 20 months. While we come up with a list of high priority action items, and I agree we should focus on ones that we can all agree to and let's get going on those and not worry about trying to fill a sort of an arbitrary egg container with 12 projects. Uh, but things will happen over the course of time. Something will come up, it always does, over the course of the next six, eight, 12, nine months. And uh, we'll have to probably adjust because of that currently unforeseen item occurring. That pretty much is guaranteed to happen. There's always something that comes up. So the other reason not to get overwhelmed is it keeps us uh, with the opportunity of addressing, thank you, though, addressing those things that might come up that are unforeseen. There are five items already uh, other underway and identified by the council. Quick comment as we talk about the number of items. Uh, I agree that we should go through, through a process. Good managers uh, go over these things with their direct reports. Uh, setting objectives, goals, priorities, uh, that's that's good management. But uh, I, th I think there's been a tendency uh, when a new item comes up that, uh, oh, we already have 11, we already have 12, uh, not sure we can do this. And, and that's the knee-jerk reaction. And uh, I'll, I'll give a case in point. Uh, the ethics ordinance, when it was first brought up, the first knee-jerk reaction is, oh, we, we can't, we got 10, we got 11. And, and council is, so some of the council members go, oh, they got 10 or 11, they're at capacity, and can't do that. Well, as a result of asking for it, right after that meeting, Commissioner Olson and myself were invited to uh, uh, the village attorney's office, and we knocked it out in 20 minutes. So I'm, I'm warning that you know, I, I, I don't like being limited to 10 or 11, or you only get seven, or the knee-jerk reaction when something new comes up that, uh, oh my God, we, we got X number. Uh, you know, that, that doesn't happen in corporate America. Uh, when, when a boss goes to an employee and says, I want this, I need this, and the response is, oh, I got 10 or 11, you know, maybe you could find some, you know, I, I can't do it, which one do you want to shuffle? And in corporate America, the answer is, okay, I'll get somebody who can do it. Goodbye. So uh, I, I, I just offer that, that, that caution, that warning, that you know, setting the number and the response, oh, we're at capacity. Uh, a good manager will know it when there's capacity, but uh, you know, we shouldn't have that knee-jerk reaction. Just picking up on that, I think that's another reason why, rather than we've got an egg carton and we need to fill it with 12 eggs. Let's just talk about what are the things we all agree to go forward on once we go forward on. That will A, keep capacity, but also B, if we get through it, we can always meet yeah. again and, and go into the next project. I think that's actually probably better than a, than a static, fixed um, list. So I, my, my, just, my suggestion is I think the, what the manager mentioned is let's talk about what these things are. Whatever the number is that we all think are great, Five, six, seven. I don't. It doesn't really matter. Whatever it is. Uh, just go to the races on those. So let me just add that our list changes during the 20-month process because we do regular updates. And I think all of this council was a part of major amendments where things that were on the list got taken off the list and got replaced by other things. We've also had a strong history of performance of being able to work in things in addition to the list throughout the years that come up on new business. Mr. Waldeck just gave a great example of one. So this is not an end-all and be-all list. This is a living list. It changes. All it really does is help point the staff in a direction consistent with council priorities. That's it. So that's the spirit in which the staff is looking to help us to go the way you want us. We're a resource to you. Where would you like us to put some time? 
Okay. Go ahead, please. Hopefully very brief, I guess you'd, on the internet you'd call it a meta comment. Um, looking at these, deciding how big each one is seems especially challenging this year. So when we create an arbitrary number, 6, 8, 10, 12, well, we don't know how big each one is, so it's pretty hard to say when you got the 10 or 12 or 14 or whatever because the size of these, and, and there's a great deal of overlap as well. So I think in some ways we, we may need to be a little more, just a little less rigid in our thinking about yeah, this agreed. because this may be challenging this year because we have things that, multiple items that link together, and some of these things we may think take a long time, may we, we, we may knock out in, in two, two meetings and they're done. We thought we'd need six, or six months or a year and we're done. So let's just see what we want to do. And go from there. And go from there. Yep. Solid I, the plan. Yep. All right, so let's get to the list. And this is at least what has been gathered as uh, potential items for consensus. In addition to the five that we already got consensus on over the last couple of months, which are also on the board on the left hand side. Right, so the left are things that we already have consensus on. Do we, uh, do we, do we just want to do a check, make sure does anybody change their mind on the ones on the left that we're all agree are things worth pursuing? Uh, they, they, the ones on the left have synergy with ones on the right. So I believe they all should stay there, yet they, they kind of blend in. So maybe I'm not totally comfortable the way they're written because I think they should be combined in a few ways with some others. But yes, all those five are things we have to do. I agree. I agree. All right. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go over the right. And I, I know these came from different people, and so folks should feel free to elaborate if they think they need to explain. Or if anyone is, let me start with this. If anyone has questions about what any of these things mean, I was just about to say to do that. Let's let's ask and then try to get some more uh, better definitions of what they are. Because that's, I think, also scope is important. And if they do overlap, that'll become more apparent if we understand it. it would be helpful for a very quick rundown. I think it would. I think it would be immensely helpful for a very quick rundown. All right. The first two have to do with amending stormwater regulations and stormwater utility credits and incentives. This has been brought to the council uh, twice in the last eight months. So it's the same scope that you've seen before. We haven't taken any action on it, on it yet, but it is ready to go. It's already been vetted by the Stormwater Floodplain Oversight Committee. This is the idea of changing regulations to mitigate uh, flooding and drainage issues from development. By making our current stormwater regulations more restrictive than they currently are. Correct. This also includes a recent discussion of LPDA regulation modifications, more stringent or more aligned or what have you. Any change to LPDA. And for the non-government types, an LPDA is what? It's a big puddle that forms in heavy rains, localized poor drainage area. <laughs> this one, enhance engagement of our board and commission members. This is an expansion of the idea of a board and commission member retreat where we better we work to better align our board and commission members with the goals, objectives of the council and how the staff operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Develop an approach to economic development tools. In the hard copy, you'll see several modifying words that were put in front of the uh, approach here. This is the idea that we would have sort of a guide map of when we would use and the conditions under which we would use certain economic development tools to send indications to the development community on what types of things we would support and how we would support them. The next one, uh, one major three C's project. I think I get these three C's wrong, but it's cooperate, consolidate. It's cooperate, collaborate, collaborate consolidate. Is all of those C's. So this is very similar to identify one major consolidation project, which was the uh, Dupont project of last year. It doesn't necessarily have to be consolidation. Well, be correct. Together. Correct. It could be, and the, and the idea isn't just to do it for the sake of doing it. The idea is to do it where it makes sense because it either maintains, enhances service levels or um, has a short-term or long-term cost reduction benefit or stemming cost increases. The next one has to do with the other side of our budget on the revenue side. It's a continuation and growth of the discussion about uh, maintaining uh, sustainable revenues. The idea here is a lot of our current revenues were born out of the post-World War II economy, and a lot of those revenue sources aren't keeping paces with expenses. We talked about this issue extensively a couple months ago. This would be a continuation of that looking for revenues that would be supported by the local modern economy uh, and be sustainable. Uh, publicly funded art program is exactly what it would suggest, uh, public beautification in the village of Downers Grove funded through some sort of uh, public means. 
The next one, reduce public safety costs. This is born out of the discussion that we know uh, <coughs> Uh, these core services are key cost drivers. They're our, our top expenses. Uh, this idea was could we look to uh, actively look to reduce public safety costs to maintain uh, financial sustainability. Gateway sign replacements. Uh, this was last discussed in 2015 where we got very far on this project and then it was uh, not uh, fulfilled due to budgetary constraints. This is replacing uh, a variety of gateway signs that were installed over the years. Uh, some of them well maintained, some of them not well maintained. This would be as you come in, welcome to Downers Grove type signs. Uh, street section standardization. Our streets um, have a variety, are designed with a variety of different, there aren't any standards, so to speak. We have some with curb and gutter, we have some without, we have some with ditch cross sections, we have some with lights and some without lights, et cetera, which is to be expected of a village that's over 175 years old. The idea here is to have a set of standards by which when we go in and touch a street, whether do maintenance or reconstruction, that we would have standards that we would apply to all streets. Uh, expand the parkway tree planting program. This has been talked about over the years uh, in many different forms. We have an extensive uh, parkway tree program right now. But the idea here is could this program be changed, augmented, uh, things like maybe we could uh, plant more trees with input from residents on a 50-50 type cost share program. Uh, could we grow the number of trees totally in the system? How would we do that? Who would we partner with? Those types of things. The next one, reestablish Human Services Commission Partnership Program. This actually appears on our current long-range planning priority action item and has not uh, been started yet, but this has its roots back four or five years ago. The Human Services Commission has been inactive for many years, and the idea here is to reactivate them and uh, identify the projects that they would do uh, that would support our long range plan. Create an emergency response volunteer corps, just as the name suggests, uh, in support of our own uh, full time and part time employees that do emergency response. Could we have resident volunteers that help us? We would have to train them, set up a program, et cetera. Uh, the next one implement comprehensive plan recommendations for the Fairview focus area. Our comprehensive plan update is just a couple of months old. It has several recommendations. The idea here is that the village would actively facilitate and take a lead role, much like we did in the downtown starting in the 1990s. Maybe not the exact same program, but the same type of approach. Not a passive approach, not an opportunistic approach, but a proactive approach where we're going to play a lead role. And the last one, uh, I, I think everybody on the council knows what the facility sustainability plan is and where we are in that. May I make a comment? Absolutely. Thank you for the overview. Thank you. Any, well, any questions about the overview? Well, this is kind of kind of about the overview. Although there's some questions about specific ones, but looking at this um, and thinking about this quite a while before we came this evening, um, my, opinion, my opinion is that there are five topics or areas that I believe that need to be addressed in the next 20 months. These are the topics, and then there's overlap. Some of, some of these action items could fall in more than one area, um, and, but, but okay. Fiscal, okay, the five that I have, fiscal sustainability and economic development. And this goes back to how you, how you count the 12 and should you count the 12 and how big things are. So how much bandwidth that takes is not entirely clear. But economic development, <coughs> fiscal sustainability, the future of downtown, uh, <coughs> stormwater regulations, complete the zoning map, Update and update the, for the entire village, including potentially a community-wide discussion of design review concepts, which makes that a little bit bigger than it was first up there. And then, um, kind of, what I see th is um, a tool to accomplish those others, but also accomplish one of the things is to enhance engage with boards and commissioners, including specifically, as many of you know, the Economic Development Commission, that we engage more collaboratively. And there's a lot of items up here. Um, and to talk a little bit what I mean about overlap, I'm going to jump to the Fairview, Fairview focus area one, very specifically, and, and how it, it applies to a number of things. Um, it would impact fis um, fiscal sustainability and economic development because there's the, the potential for a TIF district that would grow our local economy. 
It also involves a zoning map update because we were potentially updating the Fairview area of the zoning map potentially. And if we were to develop that in collaboration with DDC, we're also enhancing engagements with other boards and commissions so that one project really could fall under three categories simultaneously. Um, so basically though, but, but that's, we got these five categories and then we'd have to fit the things into them. And the other ones are kind of one-offs. If there's time to do them, maybe do them, but basically just fit everything into those, you know, and then find, pick and choose of these that fit into the categories. But I kind of want to do all the economic development ones, all the future downtown ones, <coughs> uh, both of the stormwater ones, um, finish the zoning map with design review, and then Fit, you know, put 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 the big rocks in first, and then put, and fit the smaller rocks in later. So, so I tried to follow your line of thinking, doing <laughs> purple check marks, interpreting, my, yeah. according to Dave, interpretation to get us further in. I'm wondering, are you saying that that would include a check mark on Fairview? Well, Fairview is one that that, that we could imp we, we we could achieve three separate topics with the one sub with the one specific one. Right. So I'm I what I heard from that then is the proposal is these five plus these here with these check marks. Oh, and facilities sustainability is a subset of the future downtown. Because it's that that is an issue no matter what even and I think we have a I think we have we ha we have a plan. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so we, we, the current plan is to readdress it in 2018. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I want to mention about that uh, I'm going to steal this word meta comment. It could be a comment about a comment. How do we get used with metadata? Um, the Enhanced engagement of board and commission members, uh, and I know you know this, is is much broader. Oh yes, it's not just engaging one board and commission; it's all fundamentally all. taking all our boards and commissions and making sure that all the members have um, uh, updated training and uh, information regarding uh, what expectations are and their alignment with what the, the the village council's mission is, as well as these things. It's something that we've done before, but frankly, for a variety of reasons, including logistics and. Um, Resources it has not been as, as done as frequently as uh, it would, and you might think this is a one-time shot. But number one, it takes a lot of planning. Um, it is a big undertaking, but but I think very valuable because we rely so heavily upon all of our boards and commissions, even the ones that have to be reinitiated, um, to provide guidance. And it's really a, a conduit from the community, another conduit from the community to the council to staff as to what's important in terms of uh, things to address. Uh, we often view them as, I don't want to say canaries in a coal mine, but they oftentimes will flag things before uh, they, they come to our attention. And there's often times that we rely upon their expertise as volunteers to give us uh, very valuable insights on specialized topics. And to make sure that we're, let's just say that, that it's an engine that needs to be tuned period, periodically to, to ensure that it's running at its best, as it is, at its best efficiency. So I, I agree with that one. Um, I just it's just broader than just oh, sure. the EDC. But well, I, the point, point I'm saying though is that is that in in the scope of accomplishing a a, 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 a proactive development plan, for the fair, we can actually check off a lot of boxes Sorry. with one item. Yeah, and that's been our experience with a lot of these because these for priority actions are, are all designed to implement these five goals that we've had for years. It it almost feels like staff is working on one giant interrelated project that happens quite a bit over the years. Some, sometimes we have one-offs that are distinct, but usually we find synergy in these. So I took that as a proposal that the items with the purple check mark are on the table and just wanted to sort of get reaction from the council on that. Well, you know me, I always add a check mark to the, to the three C's if one is identified and makes sense. See, I, yeah, what I say about that, my, my opinion is, is that we should have our eyes open if there's an opportunity, seize it. But don't spend a lot of time looking for an opportunity. I mean, don't, don't don't spend a lot of energy hunting out an opportunity. But if one comes across, if 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 if, if the opportunity exists, then absolutely jump on it. And well, do yeah, it. well, I don't disagree with that, and I think it's that's why I use the word identify mm -hmm. because it's not manufactured. But I got no problem checking it. It's just it's, 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 it's identify when they present. Sometimes they present themselves, and sometimes we connect the dots for others. But I think, again, this is almost something you do as a matter of course now. That's the key. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's part of our DNA. DNA. It's in the yeah. DNA. We're doing this. I mean, the fact of the matter is that last one got rammed down our throat. We can talk about achieving a goal. We'd have a choice on it. We're doing this as a matter of our DNA all the time. 
Right. We're constantly looking. What's interesting is sometimes one of them will come up that's so big it has the elements and characteristics of a priority action on it. Multiple uh, departments requiring a long time frame right. requiring policy direction, which are the criteria, by the way, for a priority action item. So, so when we stumble across one or actively cultivate one, we would never hesitate as a staff to bring it forward and say, hey, let's do this. Y yes, and, and, and just again to wrap this up, because I don't disagree with what's been said, and I don't think we need to make it a separate category. I think that the uh, identifying and pursuing uh, a major 3C when it makes sense really falls under stewards of financial, environmental, and neighborhood sustainability and continual innovation. Yeah. A little nitpicking. Continual innovation is a tool to an end, not an end in itself. Yeah, we had that discussion when that was identified. And it was interesting that the council said it is a goal in and of itself because it sort of gets into our DNA. Yeah, um, actually, I already said more than I should have, so we'll forget about that. We'll leave it be. So well, I've, put, I've definitely said too much, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to put a check mark here and say this is sort of the, let's just call it the, the list that is before us now for further discussion. Well, and it is also an ends to a mean. It's a means to an ends, too, I agree. Yes. I get the Aristotle's four causes. <laughs> well, th this may be tilting at a windmill, but I think we have to continue with facilities. I think having a, a plan to revisit it in 2018 or any other year is not a plan. Uh, we have to solve these challenges. We've known about them for a decade or more. Um, we had four, what I think were all you know, good options of, of various stripes of good. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, if we're living on borrowed time with the police station and with Village Hall, and if we pour dollar one in terms of repairs into either building, we are wasting tax dollars. Period. End of story. And if we continue to kick the can, sooner or later that's going to happen. And if it does, I think we're derelict in our duty. Um, so I think that has to be on the list. Um, absent that, I agree, you know, amending stormwater regulations, it, as I've said before, it is the universal issue. Um, I understand from discussions with staff that if you do facilities, you probably shouldn't do stormwater because they are both very large, uh, and I appreciate that. So I, I would be willing to um, put stormwater aside if necessary. In terms of economic development tools, uh, identifying new revenue sources, I think those, are, those absolutely go hand in hand with some of the, fo some of the uh, focuses on the left here, as Commissioner White said. Uh, it, it goes right with developing a plan for the OPEB unfunded liability, for EDC implementation of the strategic plan and sales tax plan. Um, the, the economic development always has to be a priority. Uh, changing topics a little bit, it kind of goes along with stormwater, but I like the idea of expanding parkway tree planting. It has stormwater benefits, um, and we're downers grove for a reason. Um, so let me let me just I sure. think did I hear you say everything with a purple check mark is done objecting to that? Support those? Want to add to it? You don't want to remove anything? Yeah, I, I'm not saying remove anything at the moment. Right. I mean, right. when you so start gonna, negotiating, I'm willing to negotiate. I'm going to do this with Let's regard to. Implementing the comp plan recommendations for Fairview, um, I live in the Fairview focus area, so of course I don't have a problem with that. But uh, you know, if if there's a another manager on that one, <laughs> <laughs> did I just volunteer for something else? Uh, if, if there's another area that the village and the EDC would identify as a higher priority, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's got to be Fairview. So uh, let me let me comment on it as much as I might like it. So. This item that we've agreed to, the EDC implementation of their strategic plan, uh, which we as a village had a great role in helping them draft, they, in this draft plan, they actually have corridor by corridor prioritized areas. This is not in this plan. So if you keep this on the list and you add to it this, it's everything in priority order on the EDC draft plan that they go off and lead. Plus that. And then we lead this one. Got it. This one, I don't think, is has as much direct short-term revenue growth as the items in this one, right? Because there's less commercial identified in this plan. It's good for the tax base. It's good for community development and neighborhood redevelopment and traffic and all sorts of stuff. But this is less of an economic development focus. There's more community development. They have a long list of items in the strategy, EDC strategy. 
the other thing that I'm really interested in, and I think it's a, a longer conversation that may go a whole lot of nowhere, but street section standardization. I think we should go down that road. Yeah, I think it's a tough conversation, but uh, you know, you you talk to to folks, and I have had a number of folks say to me, uh, you know, hey, when am I going to get curb and gutter? And that's a that we've heard it from the dais multiple times uh, over the last couple of years. And it's a tough conversation to have with people to tell them the answer might be never, uh, or at least not in the foreseeable future. Uh, I actually had one resident uh, ask me when her street was going to grow up to be a big boy street. Um, uh, the, uh, when she got her answer, they ended up moving to what she considered a big boy street, uh, thankfully still within the village of Downers Grove. But I, I think, uh, you know, we, because we're a village, like you said, it's, we're uh, as old as we are, we developed in, in different times, through different eras, and in different ways. But it, it, we can, I think, set a, a vision for the, the lights, the, the stormwater management, the roads. Um, it might take us a very long time to get there, but sidewalks took us a really long time. We got it done. Uh, well, it takes a, a, some additional a, budgeting and... and uh, you know, a lot of vision, but I think we can do it. Well, it's it's more it's more than that, and I'm glad you mentioned sidewalks. And I'm not saying yay or nay to this. Uh, just adding some context to it is the the sidewalk program was an outpouring of a TCD, public community development, village wide series of meetings that came out in favor of yes, long term and in 20 years. Uh, fund on an annual basis and work your way to the list to actually put a sidewalk in one side of every street. And street section standardization, um, I, I think, has to begin with that because as we know from the history of sidewalks, everybody agrees with that. There were streets that fought tooth and nail against sidewalks. And likewise, we know that there are as many people who say, when am I going to get a big boy street, or also, don't you dare change the rural character of my neighborhood. Uh, Which is one of the reasons why I prefaced the comment saying it may, go, may be a conversation that doesn't go anywhere. Well, no, 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 no. It, it may be a conversation because it comes up all the time, like other things. Uh, uh, stickers, totes, cubs, socks. It comes up and people have different views. It, it, to me, it, it really is what does the community want? Does the community want street stand, section standardization, which let's talk about what that is. It's a substantial capital investment because once you're doing curb and gutter, you're also doing the stormwater, you're doing everything else that goes with it. You're not just putting in ribbons of concrete, um, typically. Sometimes, yes, but that's a big conversation. And I'm not saying because it's a big conversation we shouldn't have it, but it is really a total community direction type of, is this what we want our community to be long term? And are we as a community willing to commit the long term annual dollars to make it happen, understanding that there's no way, like with the sidewalk program, it's going to happen overnight? Because it would be not only we'd have a matrix, presumably, we'd have to work through it, uh, but we would have to approach these projects as they came up. We wouldn't just start tearing up brand new streets because they didn't have curb and gutter. I completely agree. And as the result of the conversation, it may be we decide that we're not going to do any standardization. Correct. Once you, that's, that's all, that's all that's I'm getting at. I think there's a, something there's a, there's accept a preliminary the step. There's a preliminary step, which is having that community conversation and finding out what community wants. We may find out the community wants it. We may find out the community doesn't want it. We may find out that we literally have the, the Hatfields and the McCoys. I don't know. But I think that's a first step to whether to do that or not. Because if the community says, look, we want to make that investment long term, then by God, this is what the community wants. So, Greg, I put your name down as yes on these seven in purple. And then these two are separate colors. Right. So but I'm not trying to work through yeah. that. But, but I would call that it's not just street section standard standards because that suggests if we say yes, we're going to do it. I think my, what I'm getting at is it would be determining whether or not that is a community I, I think objective. I so think there's a lot of shorthand going on. When these things actually get run up, many of them use the word explore this concept, consider this concept, not saying this is an outcome, something this big. It's not we are going to standardize streets. Right. So a lot of these um, consider the reestablishment, um, consider expanding. None of these are taken as directive. We develop a scope. We ask the fundamental questions first. So we should assume that all of these are not a direct outcome. Right. Although some discussions. of these are not explored. Yes. Sure. we got to do that. Could I get some expanded information on 
parkway tree planting? I mean, what are we, what would you be thinking about? Just putting in more trees, putting in, I mean, we replace what we take out. So what, what is the goal? Closer together? Um, I, I'm, I'm unsure as to what expand parkway tree planting means. That was presented by because you you <laughs> I, I, I don't have you know, necessarily an objective to, uh, objection to Mr. it. I just Jeff want to explain. would like to know what it means. Um, it was the, the premise there is, is that we generally have what you talked about. We basically replace what we take out, uh, and I think most residents only really even know that we are on that system when their property or their neighbor's property is engaged in some way like that. This is suggesting that we would put forth village resources, communication primarily, but village resources to make sure that everybody, everybody, whatever that might mean, knew that this program existed for cooperative participation on tree purchases and tree plantings and would expand rather than just when we're taking them out. Um, there are a lot of places in town where there are not the same frequency of trees as others. We've got 170 years of development. And so Right now, most residents, I don't think, know that this program exists. And it may be the kind of thing the village just basically partners up with somebody, well, PDHA, yeah, well, but, says, but let's, to get that gun, point, let's get it done. But to that point, for the last <clears throat> three or four years, PDHA has been going out on behalf of the village doing right. the survey to where they can put new trees. Yeah. So it, it just seems like we're already trying to do that. I just don't know. I, what I, further I, I put it on the list because I don't think we're doing it very effectively. I think collectively the village of PDHA is, is, is getting into the technical details and understanding what the right course is, but I don't think we're engaging enough disinterested or marginally interested residents so to get them to want to participate. And, in and I don't disagree because I've actually, I know there's public works has flat out said, you know, there's this list of people who we don't who flat out say they don't want trees and they call every year to make sure they're on that list. Well, that's fine and dandy, but there's turnover at some point sure. in the house. And I've I've said, do we send a postcard? Do we keep track of, you know, sure. people who are on that list? Is it checked reasonably often? You know, at some point maybe the resident has moved out or moved on or has, has passed, unfortunately. And and whoever's in there now is, is somebody different. So I think that conversation has been, I, I know that conversation has been had because I've had it. Um, I just don't know if it needs to be on this list as much as I am for pro parkway tree planting. I just don't know that it it belongs on this list. So you know, the, the and items that I had were at the solicitation of Dave for ideas. And but so certainly I'm just, I'm just trying some to... Some maybe don't raise to the HPIA kind of level, but that was the logic behind it, was that okay. we probably when, could do more to engage people proactively. Okay. When I first joined council, uh, trees and the planting of trees was a big priority. Uh, each council member had a lot of interaction from, uh, from Castine, uh, and her explaining the program and what was going on and the importance of maintenance and all that. So I think before we add something and piecemeal try and think that we know what's going on with the program and what the status is, I think before we get into this specifically, that maybe we take a meeting uh, and go in the committee room and, or, or even at the, at the podium and uh, and have our village forester uh, just kind of explain what's going on. Yeah, we can do that. We take it's that. an education for the council and, and the village. We might even make a little short form video on that one. There we go. There you go. And I remember that era, that one of the reasons we were uh, we were doing that is because there are actually proposals on the table from council members to significantly cut them, ex extend the maintenance periods, uh, so and reduce planting. And so we had a real extensive dialogue at that time at the committee levels. To sort of explain, and we haven't uh, had that issue come up, and right. we've been sustainable. Two, two things, Bill. Bill's right. I think it's time for that. Uh, like we used to have the road show in the streets. I think it's time for the leaf show. The leaf show. Uh, <laughs> I, think that's, I think Bill, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I think it would be good to see that again. Enough time has passed, uh, but I have a feeling there's going to be a number of short form videos that are going to come out of tonight's conversation. 
Doug's going to be busy. <laughs> He's furious. The, award, the Emmy Award winning. I'm, I'm, I'm going to weigh in on, on this topic that I, I, I like the idea of expanding, you know, expanding the, the find a way to expand the tree canopy. I think this falls somewhere between the 20 minutes it took to fix the ethics ordinance and a true long range action item. But I do think it's, I do think we can probably solve this on new business without it being. So for that reason, unless I see anybody throwing their hands up, I'm going to cross this one out. But it's not saying we're not doing it. We're just going to take it in a different direction with some information. With a lot less. I mean, we can do it with a lot less bandwidth, but, right. but we can do it. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. I think we all agree that it's a good idea. I think it just doesn't we'll start with to the be. awareness. Yeah. Uh, like high, food trucks will take four action. meetings, we're done. And uh, four minutes. another thing, the one of the things mentioned was the Fairview uh, focus area. And you get pen. I think that's important. Uh, but also included in there is like the, the, the closing of the train or affecting or closing of the train crossing and uh, I'd be totally opposed to that again again and again as a matter of fact since we've had the comp plan and Maple was considered a uh, minor arterial or collector somewhere in there I think it's been considered both I, uh, I I would almost consider reevaluating the crosswalks along the way, but definitely not changing the uh, uh, the pattern for traffic to make it more difficult to go down Maple Avenue. So, but as far as the economic development of the area, I'm to totally in agreement with that. And I'd also, based on our conversation tonight, like to add another one that's almost like Fairview, is going over. Uh, uh, plans and requirements for our catalyst sites before we get another project that gives us the same old same old so we should include uh, Meadowbrook and uh, 75th and Lamont Butterfield. Uh, Butterfield yeah start looking at uh, uh, requirements for those areas uh, so we don't have to worry about uh, building a town of Ephesus so that looks like a Hollywood uh, set uh, let's start you know if we're gonna I, I just don't like the idea of accepting anything every anything and everything because it matches code then we need to comment was we need to change the code let's get to it right. and that would be a big item. yeah that would be a big item and, big. and again to, 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 to what I said earlier uh, if that's what the council wants to do so be it but I wouldn't limit it to the catalyst sites the catalyst sites to me are more those are places we want to spark redevelopment it's less about the aesthetics, it's more about getting something going there. The aesthetics ought to be village-wide. Why would you limit it to the catalyst sites, right? Well, the, the idea that, that, that you're doing it, you're right. doing it for, for the downtown, or we're talking about doing it for the downtown, setting up some sort of standards. So right. I can yeah, do that for the other catalyst stuff. sites. I don't think we want to have that kind of pocket zoning, for lack of a better word. But my, my point is we want to raise standards about materials, design, aesthetics, and that ought to be... Now, I hate to say uh, the sign order started. It started off as let's just fix Ogden Avenue. The next thing that was 18 months later, and we had a village wide. Yes, thank you. I still have the scars from that. <laughs> it was 18 months later, and we had. <laughs> yes, I know. We all bear scars from and, that. And we had uh, the village wide <laughs> sign ordinance. So, one of the reasons you might want to start with the catalyst sites is because many of them came to be in the comp plan because there was a concern that they were both economically so functionally obsolete but physically obsolete and we're eyesores and so there is a connection here certainly you know that would that project for village-wide design standards would be huge this might be a great lead-in if the council wanted to start small and there's a logical tie-in because we've already said hey these sites need some help they're underperforming maybe they don't look so great in fact I was rereading the Meadowbrook comments it actually talked about appearance Right, and so a lot of these, so this makes sense uh, from this former planner that if you're going to start a project like this, it might be the best place to start is cattle sites. You could do it a pilot program consistent with applicable land use laws, not making it impossible or unenforceable, which we don't want to do. See, this actually, to my mind, um, ties into the implementation, the implementation of the EDC strategic plan. And when there are plans to redevelop catalyst sites, involve all of council earlier. Because part of what happened this evening w w with Meadowbrook is that the facade improvements were negotiated without all of council knowing what those terms were. 
and then they presented to council already negotiated. So if, so if, if there's greater interaction between EDC and council early on, we can avoid these 11th hour disagreements over how buildings look because it's a lot easier with the developer to tell them nine months before they file, we don't like this, than it is nine minutes before we're supposed to pass it. That sort of presumes that we all are in agreement that we should be negotiating on those kinds of subjects, and I'm certainly not, so just to make sure that's clear. Well, I'm not entirely sure it was the EDC that negotiated that either, but I think that's a question we can handle off but, but But going to the strat plan catalyst sites to start is a good place to start. And the, and, and, and the cap plan. I want to make sure that the staff understands why the mayor is hesitating on this because it's not as simple well, as just because there's some land use law interference. Well, there's, there's land use issue. And again, I, I'm not saying this is reasons to take it out back and shoot it, but I'm just trying to say <laughs> there are legit land use law issues and what you can just say. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just a map you can start painting here, here, and here. You, you run into all kinds of different issues. It's become very complicated. The other thing that I just want to point out is that in the site ordinance, one of the problems is, is when you say catalyst sites, let's remember the catalyst sites are all over different parts of towns. And what might be an aesthetic downtown is gonna be completely different than Butterfield Road, completely different than 63rd and Woodward, completely different than 75th Avenue, completely different, it's just different. Ogden is not 75th Street. Downtown is not Butterfield. And people started struggling this where you can't have a one size fits all. And then you start saying, well, okay, well here where we have these big open end spaces up on the north side of town, well, I'm okay with this, this, and this, but downtown when it's right up to me, well, I need a different standard. And I'm not saying that that's impossible, it's just much more challenging. And then you have to be able to do that in a way that respects different places in fair and equitable manners. You can't just say, Again, I'm not well, saying so I'm not saying it can't be done. Say, it's so it, then it, are you saying not not just that, so maybe it's commercial and maybe it starts as something just minimal. It, it needs to be yeah. less than fifty percent EFIS and it needs less you know, nothing that's that's so maybe uh, I think maybe, maybe this objective information. Maybe maybe EFIS. this will help as a way not to discuss the item here tonight, but whether we should put it on the list for further discussion. Let me give you an example where we've actually already done it before and it worked. We had identified 5100 Forest as a catalyst site in our original comp plan. And it said this site should redevelop with these type of uses consistent with the zoning. And in addition to that, it said it should have a terminating vista, which is a planner term for look good when you're looking at it down the street, like in Europe, right? right? Or Washington, D.C. And so when three different applicants came through for zoning approvals, we applied the standard of does it have a terminating vista. So that fit really nicely into, it wasn't into materials, it wasn't into this, it wasn't a violating zoning, it wasn't an, it wasn't all. So that's just one example that might help frame up whether this stays on the list or not. Just one, one very, quick, very quick comment. Explaining early in the process why certain considerations um, can't be done because of zoning law considerations is better than trying to explain late in the process why certain considerations can't be taken into account. Yeah. Fair point. Understood. So, yeah, it's complex. It's going to take some time. That's why it's on a priority list. It needs to be done, and it's complicated. And it has synergy with other ones up there, so I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm not convinced it's a brand, it's its own item, but yes, that's a good way to say it. Like, for example, parked down... The downtown parking and traffic study is part of the future of downtown. We don't need a separate item for it because it's part of it. Right. It's part of it. We're going to boil and everything tonight down to one high priority action. Do <laughs> good. Do good. Oh, yes, exactly. That's first of all, just do good. And, and a quick comment on standardization. I, I think uh, years ago we, we were talking about housing and the variety, and, and the mayor, mayor kind of addressed some of, some of that. You know, people want sidewalks, they don't want sidewalks, they want trees, they don't want trees, they like tall buildings, they don't like tall buildings, I mean, and handrails and all these things, and I think one of the things, one of the nice things about our public works department is you look at something and you see a challenge and you adapt to it. And so you aren't, you, you don't have to standardize handrails and you don't have to standardize steps, you do 
you know, you have some basic uh, basic rules of, of, of zoning and uh, uh, building codes and the like. So those are standard, but within, within those standards, you can adapt handrails. You can make it out of different materials. And, and, and it's that flexibility that makes Downers Grove Downers Grove. You know, you, you can like street lights, you can have them, uh, uh, what do you call it, battery operated, uh, you know, such, uh, run by the sun, uh, electricity. I mean, you know, you, you, there's just a zillion things that you can adapt and try. I mean, uh, if you standardized everything, would, would we have the, and whether you like it or not, the uh, uh, Grove Street, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the pavers right. using different streets. So I think, I think, you know, trying to tell everybody, okay, everybody gets curb and gutter and everybody gets this. And, and nobody gets EFIS. Um, Should we be concerned that the architect in the room just ran out the door? <laughs> <laughs> Probably thought we're all nuts. Well, fine. That street section thing, uh, there's more to it than curb and gutter. Curb and gutter is where we focus because that's where the money is. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that, and I'd suggest that there's, we have a comp plan that has a series of goals that we're not hitting as hard as we could because we don't really have a plan. Um, just throw curb and gutter out. Uh, we talk about pedestrian mobility and we talk about bike access, alternative means of transportation. Uh, we also talk about traffic control. And those are all the types of elements that you might build into such a plan, even if you weren't doing curb and gutter. If you said, if you said we're not even going to touch a curb and gutter issue, you still would have a host of opportunities to further elements that are called out as priorities within our comp plan by developing some standards by which we build streets. And it wouldn't be, I, 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 my vision for this, Martin, isn't, isn't a matrix. It's not that at all. It's just a matter of we've got to, 15 or 20 year likely plan of street requirements and as you hit those you do them differently that's all it's, it's not a it's right, you well, but that would be a matrix down. in that that would be the matrix you wouldn't read well so you, you that, that's true but that's driven by other things the sidewalk matrix is largely driven by the desire to have sidewalks this is our street thing is driven by actual observations of where it's driven by other utilities. It's driven by a host of things that don't. Y yes, yes. Although, although with I mean, our current policy is to basically replace what's there with what's there. Right. If uh -huh. you're going to change that, right. yeah, that's what this. Now it's more like the sidewalk matrix. We're saying, look, you're getting a sidewalk whether you like it or not. Yeah, we're probably we're probably crossing each other on the word matrix. So let me let me throw this out based on this discussion. I interpret taking the liberty of putting up on the board. Create a street design plan. In a former life, I worked on a project that was very much went like this. Hey, when you when the village is about to touch a street, do maintenance work on it, rebuild it. What does that street look like? And in that community, it was very important that each street re retained its character, or had a discussion about whether we're actually going to change its character and design. And right. that's what I'm well, thinking well, we're hearing. Yeah, yeah, and that's all I'm trying to explain here is that, for example, if you have a narrower street in town, and the heck we had this conversation not too long, if you have a narrower street, um, you, you may end up, if you have these standards, you may end up widening that street, which now reduces the right of way, so suddenly people are, are closer to the public way, and they may actually, you may actually have to lose some, uh, I mean, I don't know if they, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it does change the character of the street. Um, it, it could mean changing the grading, it, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. And again, all these things are, are once you start standardizing things, you have to take into account that some folks may say, well, hey, I like it this way. I don't want you, I don't want my street to look like the big boy street. That's why I live on this street. So with that in mind. I'm just saying I think there's value in having that conversation. Right, so with, so with that in mind, agree. if it's okay with the proposer, this, this could be create a street also right away. It's more than just the streets. It's a right-of-way design plan. It ties very much to one of our goals of steward of neighborhood sustainability and choosing the types of street that fit each neighborhood is, I think, what's embedded here. Some would be standardized, some would yes. be unique. And, and let's not forget we have real experience with some streets where when we went in to do work, folks were given the opportunity for cost sharing. So where if everybody kicked in a few, well, it was more than a few bucks, but if everybody kicked in some bucks, they could get the street with curb and gutter and all these, these bells and whistles. And when push came to shove, it was, no thank you, I don't want to pay for it. Now broaden that out to the entire community and that's the conversation we're talking about. 
Did I capture that, Bob? That this is not necessarily standardize everything, but it's have a discussion so that the expectations of what we're going to do where, if we start to touch a right away. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to capture it in four words mm -hmm. on the board. Um, it, it, we we right. are getting hung up in high cost curb and gutter conversations, and I'm just suggesting a lot more to it. Well, well, there is a lot more to it, which, which there is a cost element to. So, for example, if you take a street that has no curb and gutter, and uh, it's 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 narrower than our requirements, whatever those are, and we and we go and repave it. Some people's expectation would be you're just going to repave the street and it will look just like it, it always has, but better. Other people's expectation might be, well, I want it widened, which means now it's the, my right of way is smaller, and there may be trees impacted. There, who knows what? There's going to be a curb, and when you're going to do the curb, now you're going to think about putting in drainage systems, which again can be very good because that's back another. Curb, back to curb, but okay. it completely changes what the. Where would you take the conversation? There's a lot of elements other than high cost elements that go into a street design that may further other goals that exist today in the comprehensive. That's yes. Well, well, but there's yeah. there's also when you do some of those things, you get then the reverse. Oh, oh, now you've got a, a license to drive faster because things are further away, things are more streamlined. You know, there's there's something to be said for those narrow little streets sometimes because people drive slower because they have to. Um, it's a give and take. So, so that and, and it's natural traffic uh, traffic calming. So. Well, is it that important that we have in the grand scheme of things that we have to put this on a priority item for this coming year since it's it's complex it's going to take time and in the overall scheme of things you know is it not in my book well, well see you know. it's a conversation we've had multiple times in the last couple of years and we're spending millions every year on street work so i'm just and gonna we're going to spend millions more well, the only thing I want to be touched on is that you're not, not off. Or to Greg's point or not, if we yeah. have the conversation, we'll make It could be we have a conversation and decide that the the policy is fine the way it is. Right. So I think Commissioner the Waldeck the keeps just asked up. the operative well, question for tonight's discussion, which is, is this, <laughs> being, is this being considered anymore at this point, at this point, to put on our list of where staff is going to spend its time in the next 20 months? Not in my book. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a... TCD four or, or what it is, but to me, we really got to get some input on the the question of and forget about cost for a second. Do you, if we go into your street, is it going to look fundamentally different than it does now because now it's going to meet all these other things, or is it going to be the same? So should should there should, is a cost element to it? Should we start to ask the should it be on a list? That, that, to me, that's the question. Should we should we start the process or not? Is is the question with, with limited resources and you're pointing us in the direction? The question is: Is this on our list? What do we do, TCD3? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll toss in why I think it should not be on the list right now is that I'm optimistic that we're going to pull the trigger on a facility sustainability plan within the next three or four years. And I don't know if we can finish it before we knock down Village Hall. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. so it's important to do, but I don't think we can get it done if, in fact, sometime in the next two or three or four years we agree to move forward on, on, on facilities. So I want to get done the things we got to get done before we knock this building down. And I just think some of these other things are going to take a lot more mm -hmm. effort. So everything for me in purple, I'm in agreement with. And then that's, if I, I don't want to jump the gun here, but I, was that a... I like the idea. I don't think I, we have time between right. now and I agree. Time. I feel like some and of these we'll other go. action items are going to take a little bit more time and manpower. Um, for me, facilities at this point in time, I've... I had stormwater up there. That was that was one that I threw out there. And for me, I think um, due to our last discussion on facilities, this is the perfect time to deal with stormwater, which continues to be an issue. We continue to have people approach us at Coffee with the Council, um, in all these other uh, public places, still struggling with these stormwater issues. And I just feel like we, we really need to take care of that. I'm all for the enhancing engagement of uh, board and commission members. I think that's an excellent idea. And from what I understand, it, it is a large undertaking. However, we have these wonderful volunteers that come out to, um, you know, to help us out. And I think the more informed they are, the more united they are, uh, the better they can work together, the better that it becomes for us when they make their decisions. So that's, that's where I'm at. Okay. I can do purple without messing with Maple Avenue. Got it. 
But that's um, more in the right. Um, I, I'm for the moment facilities I'm done with, so no. Um, Reestablishing the Human Services Commission partnership has some interest for me. Can we discuss that when we have a moment. I'm just I'm just going up the list. So um, gateway signs. I don't. I'm not interested really in, in going there yet. Let's just take a brief. Uh, gateway signs still on the list for anybody? Obviously yeah. a great project. We took we went very far on in 15. I mean, I, I'd love I'm just to do it, but reading from the it's bottom. Of gas every time, right? Um, I'd go there, but it seems it's losing. Why are we running out of gas every time? It's, it's like eighty percent done. Just do it, except for the money. So let's do it piecemeal. So let's go. I didn't mean to except for the money. I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't like I said, okay. super 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 well, let's spend eighty thousand here. Twenty. I'm sorry, there. Commissioner Earl had the floor. I just that all the time. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Marge? Um, so I heard another council member say yes to support for the purple. There's a caveat on this one mm -hmm. in the scope, and this one on, on Fairview of keeping notes on. And then Marge also said, hey, maybe this one deserves some further discussion. Okay. That's it for the moment. Can we talk about the Human Services Commission? Sure. I, as far I, as I, I personally would like to either move forward on that or to take it off the list. It's been years and we have, it has no mission, it has no members, and it's been on this list, it's been on this list, but I would like as a council to either make a decision that we're going to move forward with a Human Services Commission, give it a mission and appoint some people and do stuff, hopefully good stuff, or then let's say it's not gonna happen. And I'm not going to cast or lay any blame, let's move forward on it, but I want, I would really like this council to act on this or decide we're not gonna act on it. Uh, because it's been a lingering question, I'm glad Marge raised it. Um, uh, I, 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 I hear we have a chicken and the egg problem of well, I don't wanna appoint any people until we have a mission, but we can't get a mission because we don't have people feeding into it. And it, and, it, and, it, and it, just to get the ball rolling, you may recall uh, a year ago that uh, after coming back from National League of Cities in Nashville, I laid out a number of things that we might consider as something we could do. I believe three of those were all Human Services so Commission-esque right. type of things. Nobody ever, I mean, a lot of polite nodding. Thank you very much for going and sharing that with us. but. My, my, my challenge to this group is let's either go forward with it, come up with a mission, and appoint some people, put them to the task. Now we've got the uh, uh, giving due page element of it, and there's just, there, I think there's things that could be done here. I don't think they're gonna suffer from lack of a mission. I think what they're suffering from is a lack of direction. And, and again, whether it's this council, prior councils, doesn't matter, but from a going forward standpoint, I'd like to have a conversation about either, let's give them a mission, appoint some people, move forward, or, Let's forget about it. Well, in the same there, there has been there has been discussion, and moving that part forward, uh, there should be some new applicants since the last time it was published. So, if I get a list of the current applicants, I can make sure that uh, that the people who said they were interested are have actually gone through the process, and that's kind of where it's at. It's it's in the middle. It has been brought forward publicly, but. Uh, Mayor, I put this on this list every year for the last almost seven years. Prior to your trip out to the NLC, I actually had a specific proposal that I tried to float, and it was shit can't, for lack of a better choice of words. This is something that we should be doing, and I think it, it's, I can't understand why we're not. But to your point, we use this group, this body has to decide whether it's applicants or not. Well, well, the reality is, to do. And, and I'm not blaming Who's anybody because the, the last two councils we didn't get anywhere on this. I, I, I brought this up every year. Let's appoint some people to move forward. So I'm not again. It's I'm not blaming anybody. That's not productive going forward. The question now is if if I've got a commitment from this group to uh, recommend appointees, I'll be happy to appoint them for everyone to vote on. 
and then let's give them a mission and go. And I made that. And, and There's I made, stuff for them to do. What I, I made that commitment. And there Mr. has been some meetings. Yeah. What um, well, what I would suggest for purpose of this evening, I see this and maybe others won't agree with me, is being sort of a larger version of, of like the Parkway Tree thing. I say we don't put it on the list. It's not a, it's not, it's, it's not a priority action item. But if a really strong, compelling so, human services mission arises, we can probably act very quickly we can reconsider and do it as a new lot. business thing and then just do it. Well, but I, only when we get a, compel, a compelling reason. Because I am not... Underneath it is create emergency response volunteer force. Is it isn't that something that a human services commission could look at right off the bat? I would actually put this my understanding based on what the human services commission had done historically. Historically, but does that mean that that's what they're anything. locked into? No, I, I partially agree with you because I don't think it's a high priority action item. But I'm glad you brought it up because I want to have this conversation anyway is we have an existing ordinance that talks about this commission. We don't have to create one. We can just do it. So I propose, yep, since we're in the middle it. of this process it's right now, high priority action item. The, the proposal then is to actually just uh, circulate the names that have applied. Right. We're doing that right now, anyway, and all the other ones, um, with a goal towards actually establishing them. Let's have them meet, and then if they, under their current mission, under their current mission as described in the ordinance, if they come up with something they want to do that rises to the level of a priority action, we'll bring it to the council for an update and say, hey, we've already had, right? Good? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Aces. If it's a compelling mission, then we'll yep. grab it and run and it. And I think the, the issue is just making sure that they understand where to take it. Mm -hmm. And that has been the, the question. Yeah. Well, we would even propose hate. a couple of ideas that have come up from right. the Right. And I think that that would yeah. be very helpful. Yes. Let's yeah. seed them with some ideas. So, then let's right. get their input. So even if they like don't this. initially have a mission, we need to at least give them direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. In some way. Direct, we'll take that as direction from the council. There's no, no this, but, but you're definitely not on this yeah, priority, but it's a task list that we're going to move forward on immediately. Okay. Okay, so let's just do a little bit. Yeah, percent of something is better than 100% of nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Incremental steps. So we have really good council support for, I think almost everybody's commented on most of the items in purple, which actually would give us. 12. A really good target place to start the discussion. You don't have a check mark that's got any BBs by it, kind of jumping <laughs> on something. I thought they were usually RTBs. That's right. <laughs> that reduced public safety cost thing. We've got, whether you want to lump them underneath an umbrella or not, we've got about four or five things up here that all talk about financial sustainability and financial challenges that we see in front of us. They, you know, they range from revenue sources to the implementation of trade plan and sales tax plan. They all focus, though, on the revenue side of the things. And, and I don't think that's us doing enough work. Fair enough. Maybe that's it. Uh, and they may, as we said, that may well be a means to an end in many cases. Uh, but that the truth of the matter is, if you want to talk, Greg, about an uncomfortable conversation, this, this is certainly one. Um, but what I'm suggesting is that we understand fully what those options might look like. Similar to streets, we may decide we don't like those options, we're uncomfortable with them, and we're just not willing to engage in them. But I don't think we're doing our job completely if we're not fully vetting out the cost side the same as we're doing the revenue side. Um, and Right now, everything for a while has been focused on revenue. And so we've touched on this with you know, service levels. We've touched on it in a variety of ways and never really felt compelled to dig in. And, and I think we need to dig in. And what the point of that is, it says reduce public safety costs. It really means study and understand the options that may be available to us to do so. That's what it really means. Um, we all know the math. That's 75% of our cost. It's largely contracted for continual increases. Those increases outpace inflation and revenue growth. It's a big, big deal. And I, I just think that we need to, if we collectively have some choices in front of us and decide not to take any of them because we don't like the service level results, that's, that's a decision. 
but not studying it and not understanding it and not coming up with options and not coming up with some potential paths to reduce costs, I think is not doing everybody our full job. Well, let me ask you this, because one of the troubles that I've had with it is a lack of definition. A number of things we've talked about here are, uh, for, pardon the pun, street level type of things. Uh, putting curb and gutter, I know what that is. Uh, plant more trees, I know what that is. When you talk about reducing public safety costs, as someone who's now been on the council for over four years and very involved beforehand, um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. You must have some specific ideas of what you mean by that, not just studying options. What are we talking about? Because I think part of the reason why we don't have a conversation is, what do you mean? Well, I think we need to look at reducing service levels. In but such as what? But I don't know if, how this shakes out, but whether it's less people in either of the departments, or less facilities in the fire department, less anything. It's all people. 75% of our cost is three organizations of which three quarters or 80% of that is in two. So we're talking about police and fire by and large. And the question is, are there operations, are there structural differences that might do us a lot of good from a cost standpoint, understanding what those are, and then what the implications of those are on service level? Because you, you wouldn't necessarily just take them to save the money. So you think back to, for instance, you know, we used to have at least one more fire station than we have now. I don't think we made the decision to close that necessarily in quite this kind of a context, but we had at least one more fire station than we have today. 15 years ago, 18 years ago? 1993. So about 20, 24 years ago. That was closed, and the impact to the village was what? Well, I think most people would argue the limits. So is that option exist elsewhere? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think any of us sitting here does. What I think we all know is that we get nervous about having the discussion about lowering, or at least statistically on paper, service levels from a public safety standpoint. But there may be lower public safety levels that we can actually live with that have substantial cost savings. I don't know the answer to it. But that is where all our cost is. Our, our staff does this wonderful job up and down the line from the department heads to the chiefs to Dave and his team of controlling, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, controlling expenses and trying real hard to control expenses, but that doesn't talk about cost structure. Well, and, and that's, I guess, where I have a, a trouble because uh, staff has always, and you can talk about every, whether it's public works, whether it's code enforcement, whether it's 801, whether it's police, whether it's fire, uh, go back to the jump companies, I mean, you can think sure. of numerous examples of where, again, sort of on an everyday basis, um, uh, There's the a people in the line. They've done it uh, with our direction to not have all service levels. Well, that's, that's but, I mean, but, but things have changed to try to manage costs, and they do that all the time. Um, with fixed service I mean, to, 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 but, but there's a different thing to say, I want you to do X and tell me what the consequence of that is. And that's where I, I really, I mean, I think you've got to be much more direct about what you're talking about. Our, you're talking about closing the fire station. Our conversations, that, that our conversations have always gone back to retaining <coughs> existing or enhance is the wording we use all the time. Maintain, maintain or enhance. enhance. Our conversations, our direction to our team has always been maintain or enhance service levels. It's never been, let's take a look at lower service levels. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about lower service levels. If we take a take a response time number, it's just a number that people like to use, that varies across the country. We have a number, we don't like the idea in our gut generally of increasing it, right? But what if we did? Would we be that much worse than Pick a community. Sure. I, I, I hear you. And I'll, I'll just tell you that for right now, and this is just right now, um, I, I think that what we have done to achieve the CLIA rating that we have for our police department and the ISO 1 rating for our fire department are something that I would be very reluctant to uh, interfere with uh, and don't want to take, because those both have cost benefits to our, our, our residents um, directly. Uh, for example, the ISO sure. 1 rating has a direct fire insurance benefit to our to our residents. I would not want to do anything now to to affect that. Uh, so in terms of doing something to change our service levels for our first responders um, that would jeopardize those ratings uh, for whatever it might be, it's not something I'm interested in right now in pursuing. But I wanted to have this conversation about what are you talking it, about. It's a commitment then. I hear you. I would, I would I rather accept, first, I would rather first explore these other things about how we can um, um, 
do other things to maintain what we have. And again, when I talk about maintaining, I mean our clear rating, our ISO one rating, which I think we very worked hard. Or we, 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 I didn't do anything. I know, I the village has done very hard to, to earn that, much like our bond rating. The and well, and that's, that I'd like to maintain. That's what I'd like to maintain because in a, in a way we've achieved that. Here's, I don't want to lose it. Here's the other thing we're maintaining. We're maintaining that, or we're saying we want to maintain that 75. That's just what I'm saying. If that were the decision of the, of the group, we're saying that we want that. What we're saying that we're also maintaining 75 percent of our cost base, increasing at a level that far outpaces both revenue and inflation. With the understanding that there's always, on a day-to-day -day basis, within those same organizations, efforts going on to try yeah, they're to... Not, they're not, Mayor. We, we went through this on the board. We looked at staffing levels and growth as compared to staffing levels. We cannot sit here and assume we're going to continue to have 20-plus percent decrease in staffing levels. And that's why we've been able to maintain that. We've been able to maintain those costs largely because while we've had an 11% increase in cost over a long period, which is great, We've dropped staffing levels by thirty percent. But there are other, but, but there are other management issues and there are attrition issues and all kinds of things that go on on a daily basis. That I think help to stem that. And you're, you're right; it's not going to eliminate it. It's like a flat line. But my, I guess my answer is thank you for providing that detail. My current, my, my just me, me myself and I. Current position is I'm not interested in in something that would um, um, uh, jeopardize is too strong of a word. That would risk That's losing. The right word. Okay, that would jeopardize our CLIA rating and our ISO rating. So we had two council members. Yes, anybody agree. else? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, I want to just add a slightly d d different perspective on this. Um, this absolutely is a strategic decision about the future direction of the village. Mm -hmm. I don't think it fits the criteria for, criteria for priority action because I don't think it would take staff very long to say what the costs and the impact is. I mean, the, the, this isn't a work project. This is a decision. And at the moment, I am totally unwilling to take a step to reduce our service levels, police or fire. I think that's... Okay, I'm totally unwilling to do that. If, but, 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 but if Commissioner Barnett wants to bring this to a head, file a new business item. And then, and then st staff can tell us how much we would save if, hypothetically, I pose this, closing at least a, 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 a fire station. How much would we save, and what would it do to our ISO rating? I don't want to threaten our ISO rating, but, but see, this isn't a high-priority action item that requires staff work of, of any great amount. It's a strategic decision. And I'm not, you know, see, and, I, I, and I'm that's... Gonna, I'm going to split the baby on your yeah. comments there a little bit. I agree with you that I, I don't want to do anything that jeopardizes our ISO rating or our CLIA certification, number one. Number two, I... I do think this rises to the, the level of a high priority action item if folks wanted to do it. I don't. Um, but I, and it's because of the public engagement that would be necessary in order to make that decision. I don't think you yeah, say, I'm going to close a fire station or I'm going to yeah. cut a certain number One of, of the people criteria out of the fire department sort of the, the without things, having yeah. a conversation oh, with every four thing. Right. So, uh, now that for the purposes of tonight, then I just we can, we can obviously I understand where this is going. Yeah. Right? But Commissioner Barnett filed a new business item. Come on, Bill. A little, little flip for tonight's conversation. This is obviously, well, obviously, obviously we're even, if, we're, if well, it were even suggested, would require, would require at least four hours worth of thought. It's not going to go like that. I also want to point out that it's, you know, just real quick, that it's more than do we close this or do we close that. It's more than how many people do we lay off. It's more than uh, Kalia and ISO, as important as all of those things are. Response time. Se yes, seconds count. Absolutely. Seconds count, and, and you're talking about lives. You get out of your driveway because it's also public works and snowplowing. It, it is right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Please so, call snowplowing. Those are the big ones. So this, this, I think we have direction on this. Okay, Bob, you had other items you want to chat about? Um, yeah, the, just the, this whole gateway sign thing. I, I know that seems to be something we're also not going to do, but I guess if we're talking about high priority action versus versus not. That job is 80% done. Would it, would it kill anybody to see if there was a way to fund it as we work on next year's budget? Pick one, pick one and see if there's a way to so, fund it. So budget. we could actually uh, short circuit this one a little bit. We could make this a budget discussion. We don't have to design the signs. We could actually just done. say, yeah. anybody, when the budget comes out, we'll say, do you want to put more in, in the capital projects fund to fund gateway signs or cut another project? So we'll take that as a. I think we should, we should have a referendum on the choices. 
because that's where our content <laughs> always goes. If we're willing to short somewhere and just take a poll, then we can check back in. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be an election until 18. <laughs> the last comment I have is that publicly funded art things, those that have been here a while will recognize seeing that keeps popping up there too because somebody keeps submitting it. Um, these are some of the things that we, you know, perhaps there's another way to skin the cat and it's not a high priority action item for our staff. I, I certainly would concede that. But something like this doesn't get started without a council deciding they want to be supportive. And it doesn't mean, I want to clarify, publicly funded. What I really mean is an art program in public spaces. And those can be funded, if you look across the country, a gazillion different ways. But it requires the authority. Privately funded public art is what you're talking about. It could be, or it could, or it could be well, you know, solicitations on water bills. It could be a number, it's a host of things. But the point is it requires a body like this, the authority body, authoritative body in the area. Interestingly uh, To enough. decide they wanted to engage the concept and devote some staff time to working either with council people or with people on the outside at such an end. Interestingly what, enough, yeah. all new development in Kansas City proper 5% sure. goes to public art and public spaces. 5% of every project. It makes a huge difference. But that's all putting out on the backs of private development. And it's it's an intriguing concept. It really is. And it is beautiful. I want to piggyback on something you just well, said. Go ahead. Good. You reminded me. Uh, interesting concept, but remember we were talking about the impact fee? Yes having part of the impact fee go towards the historic cost of historic preservation yes. because we have no funds to actually do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a high priority action item. I think it's give me 20 minutes and a pen and Enzo and I can bang that one out. But so we're still actually working through the recommendations of the historic preservation plan. Yeah, and it may be something that's already works, but I don't want to lose sight of that. I know the mind. ADRB is actually talking about it currently. That's either on the upcoming agenda. It's that, that concept is not dead. It's the next on the list for consideration. Okay. I'd also like to bring up uh, the identify and adopt new revenue sources. It isn't a high priority action item, but or, or maybe it is if everybody wants to have a major discussion on it, but I've given some thought and I asked staff to look into it, is uh, a dog hotel tax uh, that could raise anywhere from 60 to more than 100,000 a year. Uh, animal boarding tax. That would be a great example of a revenue that's pretty consistent with trends in the modern economy as that industry has yeah. grown. We spend a lot of time talking about dogs, and, and I'm not talking about you know hospitals and, and that type of overnight. But you know, people are actually leaving town, going on vacation, spending money elsewhere, and they leave their dogs here, and we charge people who stay here a hotel tax. Why not a small tax on the on overnight? Boarding of dogs. Does that apply to the water and biscuits too? Is there one percent food and beverage tax? Uh, Maybe, <laughs> if you want, if you want. But, biscuits and chew toys. But I mean, you know, I I, I think uh, my suggestion, my original suggestion was about two bucks, and it would raise over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So if staff would look into it, that's something we can do budget wise. And if you need a. Uh, uh, a dedicated revenue source for things like Meals on Wheels that we traditionally give 30000 a year to, uh, that could ha that could be a dedicated well, we source. So, it's it's it it so we already have a check mark by this, and we already have a great example of what one of those new revenues consistent with the modern economy could be. We've already actually, I talked to Commissioner Waldack about that, worked on some of those. So, oh, that's, I'm hearing this one stays on the list, and we just got an example of one of the items that might be discussed. The only thing I just want to clarify, yes, the only thing I want to clarify, I did my new revenue sources, the modern economy, is, is, is some of this is just the, in the messaging. We're, we're not talking about, gee, let's find other ways that we can get money to spend. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the world is changing, and how do we uh, change, not reactively, but proactively, understanding that it's about replacement. It's not about, hey, let's come up with more money so we can spend more money. That's not the idea. Oh, this is about paper bags or sweet drinks. This is 
not in my book. This is uh, about the obsolescence, if you will, of some of our major revenue sources in finding yes. the current Re ones they replace. I'll add the word replace. Supplant, not supplement. Mm -hmm. So we got a pretty good uh, list with the purple check marks. Does anybody want to put a check mark next to any one of the remainings that are not checked or crossed off? Public art, volunteer corps, plans and or requirements for catalyst sites in the comp plan. I think plans requirements for the comp plan actually fits in EDC information on the strat plan. I think I think we need to do that. I don't think it needs to be a separate item. I think it'll get worked into everything else. I would like to do it. If it gets rolled into something else, I can work with that too. All right, so okay. what we'll tell Michael and the liaison to the EDC board at staff level, which is me, uh, is that's important to this council that this be addressed. When, when we talk about our toolkit, when we talk about how we're going to do it, this is part of it. Got yeah. it. So, so it gets, him and he it gets him. an X, but it's taking us direction on catalyst. And then I guess there's one final topic. I didn't bring this up earlier. I come, it's not really sure how it fits into this into this context. But falling under the creative plan for downtown and update the downtown zoning regulations. Finally, at our next meeting, I'll pass it out now so we have notice. I want to have a formal new business item for the downtown design review at OCK. Committee that, that, that we've discussed. Yeah, we're st okay. so I can't remember if that's coming to the first meeting in September of the council yeah. or the second. But it's that's September fifth is, is so it's a possibility. So I have a new business item, which by the rules I'm turning in now for our next council meeting that I, I will be at. I won't be here next week, so okay. I'll pass it up. Yeah. And uh, so I, I will also bring up two items, and probably more in relation to what the job is about. And we've all seen this before. But therefore, uh, it's not back in May because of the nature. Uh, they have to be on uh, an executive session. Okay. So, just an FYI for warning. <laughs> that sounds ominous. Uh, what it is, no, it's it's a, a strategic direction on some things and how we address things related to closed sessions. Uh, so, it's what did Commissioner White call it? A strategic decision direction, maybe not a whole project, but Bill and I have talked, right. it would oh, be a okay. great discussion for us to have. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Are we putting check marks by any of these other two? Not at this time. Okay. The staff has received tremendous and clear direction tonight. Thank you. We get it. Mr. Paradis thinks up once for the week. You good? Wasn't you had your sausage? Yeah, we got it. Public comment. Maybe? Yep. Public. Public, comment. public comment questions comments all right well thank you very much for sticking with us throughout the balance of this discussion this is obviously very important and we do it every year um if there's nothing further motion, uh, to, adjourn. motion to adjourn please motion to adjourn second all in favor aye any opposed we are adjourned thank you and good night <laughs>